Hello, Mariner fans, and welcome here to the Crow's Nest. As promised, if we would get past 100 subscribers, I'll be starting to live stream some baseball games, and that is just what we are doing today. We've got our Mariners coming back into action here against Houston. They are going to try to bounce back from last night where they had their 14-game winning streak snapped. It's always nice if you're going to have a winning streak snap that maybe you get your ace on the hill the next day. And indeed, right now, we got Logan Gilbert on the hill and already out the gate looking dominant. That's right, folks. He is. He's got two strikeouts to start things off here against Jose Altuve, throwing some real nasty, nasty sliders out there already. Just a ton of movement, which is uh, glorious, glorious to see. But uh, we are doing our first stream today, so if there is any weird issues or anything popping up do let me know we're obviously there's always a few little uh little blips that you usually have to work through to make sure everything's running smoothly when you're doing these streams but uh i feel good think we got everything ready and ready to go on it so let's hope everything's right in here running right so we got uh alvarez up now starts him off with a little slider again he's definitely working that working that good here to begin things this must be feeling good Comes back with some some nice, nice heat. Strike two. Boy, Gilbert's looking good today. Gilbert's looking pretty, pretty good at the gate. 0-2. Oh, Another slider. Boy, that's just beautiful placement there by Gilbert. If you're going to have it on 0-2, oh, you want a little bit out the zone, right? You, you, got, you got three pitches to work with, so you want to keep it. You know, you want to keep it down low and away. You don't want to put it anywhere near the strike zone. And he did that. Forced the hitter to swing out of the zone there on an 0-2 pitch, which isn't always easy to do. Randall McDaniel, what's up, dog? Uh, Randall says, can't donate on this channel. Nope, not yet, Randall. We got to get to 1,000 subs to be able to do a donation situation. Um, so, unfortunately, no, aren't going to be able to do that. But that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll hopefully grow pretty quickly with this in time. I'll tell you, Randall, we're, we're getting uh, bigger and bigger here already out the gate with uh, – just the last couple of weeks. So I'm sure we'll be there in no time. Mark Thurston says, Mr. Gilbert looking strong today. Boy, he was. Um, I, working the pitches back and forth between the fastball and the slider. The slider is showing the movement that it has it, it shown all year long. That's one of the reasons why I say that this guy is an ace of the staff right now. He gets knocked a little bit, Mark, for the fact that he's only got two pitches. And, and it has other people, you know, higher on other pitching prospects in this organization. But for my money, he's a young kid here in his second year who is showing dominant tendencies. And uh, I'm, it's one of the reasons between him and Julio and, and maybe even a guy like France or would be really my, there's actually a couple other guys on the field. I wouldn't, I wouldn't move on from Riley, would move on from Crawford, but there's a couple of untouchables on this team right now for me, just me. And no, other people might differ on this, but for my money right now, I'm, I'm not letting Logan go anywhere. He sits as one of my stalwarts of this staff into the future and uh, I feel very happy with that. So, but boy, that, uh, that, that slider with 95, 96 mile an hour fastball with some movement running away, you know, you, you just don't know what you're going to get, which way the ball is going to go. And the slider, of course, always looks like a fastball right up until the last minute in which it doesn't, unlike the curveball, which is the, the big bendy hook that you can start to recognize and see out of the pitcher's hand almost immediately. Randall says, I was about to download Metallica audiobook, got to dig a sprinkler. Realized the narrator was British, hard pass. Then I saw your show pop up. Oh my goodness, yeah. Wow. You can't have a British guy doing a Metallica audiobook. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. I can see where they're trying to go for with that, Randall, but uh, I don't think that that's gonna, I don't think that that's gonna fly. I don't believe so. Tough loss last night. Of course, uh, interesting, Julio Jones was scratched from the lineup because of, I, if you guys saw my video about Julio here on this channel, Recently, I, I put in that clip of that hand coming in there and catching there, and I was I was thinking maybe it was going to be okay because he did go through the home run derby and and all of that. But you know, indeed, I don't know. I don't think we got him in the lineup again tonight. So in, indeed, that that wrist is probably a little bit sore, and I wonder if that home run derby thing kind of exacerbated some of those issues. But this is a big loss for us in the lineup, not having Julio in this game especially with Justin Verlander on the hill and his 1.89 ERA. How the hell is this guy so dominant for so long? Just never never wears down just just a just a machine out there. It's pretty incredible how long he's been pitching and still being as dominant as he is. And what a trade for the Astros, you know, you want to talk about making a trade deadline deal that works in your favor. 
And JQ, JQ, JP Crawford with a little op, oppo base hit here. As JP does, nice solid contact, barrel up on the ball. Even swing, nothing uppercut about it. Don't, don't try to do too much with that pitch. It's even, it's even a couple of inches outside the zone. And he's still able to get good, solid contact. So it's one of those things about when those pit hitters tell you now that, well, you know, when they get the shift and they, they can't help but pull the ball constantly, these dead pull hitters, you can. If you commit to, to being able to hit with that style of, of, let me get solid contact, let me hit with line drives. This is another hitter coming up to the plate, and Ty France, who does the very similar thing. Work on getting the solid contact. And France has got more power, obviously, but so many of the hitters today, as we've seen with all the strikeouts that are rung up and the pace that on every team, basically, that you see it, these guys are just sometimes looking for just the power swing with it. We're sometimes just, especially with as nasty as the movement is on these guys, especially when you're dealing with an ace like Verlander, just get solid contact on it. Oh, one here to tie. He got a 95 mile an hour fastball up in the zone that he liked. Verlander kind of got away with one on that first pitch, frankly. It was 95 in the middle of the plate. Grug, I hate the Astros so much. Grug, I hate the Astros too. I'm sorry, they cheated like mad, and I'm. Uh, it, it should hang over this franchise for years to come, especially considering the fact that they didn't. Uh, you know that they didn't get punished. No player got any real suspension for that situation, which I thought was bumpkus, dumb. Randall says Julio's injury is a bit of a buzzkill, but a letdown after the past week. Yeah, it really does hurt. It really does hurt, man. You know, and, and I don't know if him going to the home run contest, again, did made it worse. I don't think it was probably going to be sore regardless. It was a, if you watch that video replay, it's one of those ones where you could have easily heard them say, oh, he, you know, snapped something or something broke. You know, his hand just goes in and, and up. And they've got to rethink how much they're having him try to steal bases as we move into the future. I, I love that he can do it, but Julio's here for what he can do with the bat and what he can do running the bases, not necessarily him stealing bases, especially when it comes at the injury risk, which people already talk about with these guys as to why they have guys running less. And boy, uh, Ty just got a little bit of a little bit of the ball on the bat with that one. Again, Verlander's playing a little bit with some scary territory here by working up in the zone with these fastballs on Ty. That's a place where he can as said, if you if you got the uppercut swing, guys, you can work up the zone a little bit higher and get away with that. But if you've got a leveled out swing like France does, where it's going to come through the zone for a long period of time. He tried to get him. He went real high that time. Verlander up the, up the velocity a little bit, got up to 97 on the gun, went a little bit higher out of the zone. Ty didn't, Ty didn't bite. That's a great pitch by Verlander. That's a veteran pitch, though, by him. He's, he's sensing he's getting France maybe willing to swing a little bit out of the zone up there high and. Test it, especially when he's got him one, two. Verlander comes back a little slider there. And France is able to work it off. Very good pitch. A lot of movement with it. It ended up in a bad spot, but a lot of movement. 283 says, do you want the Mariners to pursue a Juan Soto trade? Personally, I really don't want to give up Kirby, so that's a no for me. I'm in overall in favor of it, but it does depend to a three on me on how you can package together the, the prospects to make it happen and what it, what it is going to be the cost. Um, George Kirby would be a very hard player to get rid of. Ty France again just puts the bat on the ball and whoa, what a catch by the center fielder covering a lot of ground there. That ball looked like that was going to fall in there. Good two strike hitting by France. Just get you get get at least get the bat in the ball. I always say again, he gets the barrel on the ball. Good things will happen. Just hung up there a little bit in the air there, allowed the center fielder to come over and make a really good play. Very nicely done. I, I I'm sort of torn two eight three on the Soto trade. I wish I had a, a more of a I want to do it a hundred percent or no. I your hesitancy also is part of where my hesitancy is with the situation going. I'm not sure. Not sure if I, I want to give up all it's going to cost to do it. And then you got to pay the guy. That's, 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 I'm worried. And the, the big thing with me is almost not the paying. It's, it's the defensive aspect. I feel like on, in this stadium, man, that was a crappy call by the umpire on 01. That was a curveball that was nowhere near the plate. I bent completely around the plate and he got the call. But um, 
Let me uh, 283. Let me cover it here. We'll do some play by play, and I'll give you my full thoughts on this with the with the break. But I I do with you have some worries about doing it. It's not just 100 percent out of the park no brainer to go do it. But the defensive thing with him is the one worry I have as much as anything. Verlander getting Winker to swing out of the zone 0-2 on that pitch. That, that rising fastball of Verlander. It's tough stuff, man. Looks like it's it's coming in mid mid up, and then it's just at the just just like a four seamer that moves away from you. It's just whew. Space City says go Astros. Good luck to you guys today. Not really, but kind of. Uh, Randall, yeah, I think he had an actress. He was with some girl for a while. I forget who's her. It wasn't Alyssa Milano. I thought he was with. Wasn't he with that uh, one blonde girl with the 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 model? Winker pops it up over into left field. Just trying, uh, much like with France, fight off the pitch early on here. The Mariner batters are getting behind in the count outside of Crawford, and it's really loaded. it's getting them more into more of a defensive mode early on here in their swings. Carlos Santana now walks up to the plate. Got a black magic woman. Got a black magic woman. All right, come on, Carlos. Come on, Los. He's going, to, he's going to give you a nice 95 mile an hour fastball right up up in the middle of the plate. Torque up on that bad boy and give him, give him the juice. Give him the juice. Of course, he comes with a slider first pitch. Guess you know I don't come, wasn't a batter in base major league. Well, the Mariners are being very ag aggressive early on in the counts here to start things out. It is getting him a little behind the count to a degree. I would have been looking fastball there, and if he was sitting on slider, I would have just said, I would have just said, nah. I would have gone that route with that. If I was Carlos there, make him throw a strike on that first pitch slider. Don't swing at it. That was weird. But 2 8 3, I, 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 I've seen this team put together at times with good defensive players in certain spots, bad defensive players in, in other spots. And especially with outfield defense, having guys that can cover the ground and, and are rangy out there and having a couple guys now that are rangy that you can combo together. I go back to 2001 when you had Randy Wynn and Mike Cameron out there, center field to left field, and then each row to right. And they were able to take away so many hits that would have been doubles and, and their coverage out there and cut, sing, cut doubles down to singles because they could cut things off. Their speed and ability to get so much of that area, it's, it's a large outfield. It really is. And so bringing in Soto, even though I would say probably right field's a little easier than left field in this particular park, bringing in Soto, who is kind of may defensively, does worry me if I'm going to be giving up all the assets I have to give up. It's if I'm going to give it up for that kind of superstar and then pay that superstar, I would like to see there be a little bit more defense to what they're doing. I also think that if you're looking at competing this year while Soto helps you, I think that you have to really look seriously at the fact that George Kirby at some point or another is going to need to be shut down or dialed way back. He's going to hit his pitch, pitch count, pitch limit. And when that happens, you're going to need another starter. And I am coming a little bit more around the, around the line of, Another starter is probably what's more needed here rather than the flashy move, which would be to go get the bat of Soto. I wouldn't hate getting Soto, but I do have some trepidations here more than I had initially when looking at it. I'm not, I'm not as worried with the giving up the Kirby thing. I've had too many young starters come through here who are absolutely going to be the ace of aces through, through these years. And, and a lot of them just flamed out or just became pretty good pitchers. I, I think the risk of that especially with pitchers and the way that they can have those freak injuries that come around at times to the arm. That opens the door a little bit more wider for me, particularly to, to be open to trading them. It would hurt. It would hurt 283, but I would do it. James Stoltzstoltz says, why did Julio do the home run derby with a sore wrist? Um, well, you, you, got, you got the answer in that in the, in the spectacle it was. People were talking about it. People were... Um, talking about him it put him into superstar status almost in the minds of people that hadn't been aware of him up until that point uh gilbert doing just like what verlander here is coming out oh two here against bregman beautiful slider there that went right, out, right in on the hands of bregman he wasn't going to do anything with that pitch he hit it hard but you're only going to hit that that ball hard if you're putting it in the seats foul he's already got him choking up on the bat here oh two gilbert with the wind another another nasty slider down in his shins he gets him to swing at that slider way low. 
it, it just shows you about where they see it. So James, I, I think it's, you know, you would like the player not to do that, but young exuberance is going to be tough to hold down. And Julio at that point in time wanted to go do that. And it's probably not a serious injury in that it is, I don't think going to hold him out for a ton of period of time, but I do believe that, you know, it's, he's probably going to have to let it go through the good news. When you're that young, you, you usually recover from these kind of injuries a little quicker, but, um, it was going to hard be hard to keep him out of that. I, I think he knew what that was going to accomplish for him and what it did accomplish for him by, by going and doing it. But you also have to think James, it probably didn't help making all those swings happen with that wrist in that state that it was in. And Gilbert threw a uh, knee high fastball on the outside corner for strike three there on Bregman. Just absolutely was running, running. Yeah. That was the four seamer runs right away. there, just right into the outside point of the point, 96 miles an hour on the, almost on the black. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, two. That's uh, we're going to have a good little, uh, we might have a good little uh, ace fest going on here today, folks. Well, back and back. Both these guys are, uh, Absolutely on slider outside corner, right on the black again there by Gilbert. I mean, just free and easy there, isn't it? Randall McDaniel, is Soto's defense that bad? It's not bad, Randall. It's just May. And it's, again, not enough, Randall, for me to do a, a, a complete, like, I'm out on him. It's But it is the one factor that does kind of come into this now. Where you go, I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. So it's, it, it isn't full on bad, but nowhere near good, too. Randall says, we saw a recent breakdown saw a, uh, saw a breakdown of the recent trades the Astros made to bolster their club. What were that were thought of as big time prospects? Basically, they didn't mount a squat. Yeah, I'm, I know. I think and Randall, our, our fandom here, I think, has been a little bit bit in the butt. You know, you look back at the Adam Jones trade that you made. You look back at the Jason Veritek trade for Heath, Heathcliff Slocum back in the day. We've had a loss of some very good prospects by going forward in the now and making these kind of aggressive moves. But I think at the end of the day, more often than not, these prospects don't amount to that much. And it's very rare when you get a team making the trade deadline deal, in my opinion, where it does come back to really kill them in the way everyone tells them they're being killed when they make those kind of deals to try to go for it. But um, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. And I'm telling you what, the Astros feel good about those trades in retrospect. Gilbert with the 2-2 pitch here to Tucker. A little slider on the outside corner. Gets a weak little swing. Foul. Space City says, can't wait for McCullers to return. Yeah, that'll definitely help you guys out. That's for sure. Randall says, go get the pitcher from Cincy. I think he's one of the targets. He's one of the targets that would make a lot of sense. 2-2 pitch here to Tucker. Gilbert with the wind, a little outside, 97 mile an hour fastball. Go 3 2 here. TJ Singh says, Watch it on FS1. I am indeed. I am indeed. I don't have the volume on though, so I can't. Otherwise, you guys would hear the volume, and nobody wants that. 3 2 pitch, fastball on the edge of the plate, gets him to turn it over. Nicely done. So, again, that's a pitch. When I, this will be something I do ARP on the channel with these hitters because they, luckily they're going to get bailed on this next year because they're going to stop doing the – you can't do the three guys to one side of the infield anymore. The I'm forgetting the name of it. Jesus, it's blanking. But um, they got to stop that next year. But that's a pitch there again where you gotta you got to go with that pitch to the opposite side of the field. And instead he tries to turn – all you're going to do by trying to pull that ball is just turn it over on the ground. So quick two outs here for Gilbert. It's a swing and a miss on a fastball. 96 inside to Guerrero. Watch VizQuest. What's up, man? Thanks for the stream. Absolutely, brother. I love doing this stuff. So we're going to be doing a lot more of these with the Mariners uh, going forward. You can believe it. Watch VizQuest. Like a pro major league broadcaster. Don't hesitate to tell baseball related stories that don't really go anywhere. I will. I will. I got, I got an assemblage. I'll tell you. I got an assemblage. <laughs> Something with, with something with the audio. Oh, I know what's wrong. Sorry, audio should work now. Down mix to audio. Sorry, guys. Yeah. 
uh, the audio on that gets a, I got I have to do a new scene setup. I can't use my Hawks Nest setup, so I have to like go into new accounts. So I have to reset everything up. That should work though. I just down mixed it to. Um, let me know if that fixed it, TJ. On that, that should fix it if, if I'm not mistaken. It's the down mix to audio, I believe. Gilbert Gilbert getting some good swings out of the zone here. I'm liking this. Sure, I got my stuff right. Offset audio. Let's do 100. Let me know, TJ, on that, if that worked. That should work right now. I mean, sorry, it's a little off early on, folks. <laughs> got to work out the kinks. First time on this live, so got to work out the kinks. All right, Logan now has got a one-two pitch here to Curiel. Gets him again, a little weak swing. Curiel pops it on up into the outfield. Very similar on both sides uh, of what we're seeing here between Gilbert and Verlander in the respect of getting these guys uh, no wasted motion here, no wasted pitches. We're not going to try to nibble on the zone. We've got overpowering stuff. You're going to struggle to catch up to it. I'm going to pound the pound the zone and, and make you prove that you can hit this stuff. And uh, it's interesting to see. Uh, TJ says, I don't know why people don't like the Fox scoreboard. It's fire. I don't mind it. It's cool. I like it. I wonder if I should be doing the major league. Uh, I wonder if the major league, I'm doing the ESPN one here. I wonder if the major league baseball one would look better. I think that one would look better. Let's go to, the, let's go to MLB. There we go. Uh, that's a better backdrop, right? That looks a little bit better. That looks a little bit better. Randall says it's 183 degrees in Yakima. Yeah, it's it's hot here too. It's getting it's supposed to be getting up there next week as well. Uh, Randall, did you get Randall? Let me know. Did the sound thing work, guys? Let me know on the on the chat. I just made a couple of adjustments to the thing, so it should be down mixed to audio now. It should be working, and it should be showing up in both ears. Let me know if it's not. I'm hoping that that worked. I can change it back if that made it worse. All right, so Seattle. Do, 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 do. Nope, still only in the left. Okay. Let's see if I can fix it here. So I think I fixed it, but I think I'm gonna have to, uh, I'd have to restart it to get it to work. Who's up at bat? Eugenio Suarez is up at the bat right now. Start out this uh, game. So I might have to fix it after on this or, or do a stop and start. Yeah, we'll just, we'll probably have to fix it on the next one. So sorry about that guys. It's first, uh, first stream. So there's gonna be a few kings to work out here to get these all ironed out fully. Suarez is up and he's actually 2-0 here. First uh, Mariner batter that Mariner batter that is actually ahead in the count. Verlander here with the wind and the deal. Ooh, gets a swing. Eugenio could not stop himself. He had 2 and 0. He wound up for that swing. Verlander gave him a fastball right up at the top of the zone. So he he gave him uh he gave him something to work with there. Okay, cool Space City. Yeah, I'll get it figured out in the next one. I promise, guys. Sorry about that. 2-1 pitch. Way up high. Three and one here. All right, let's see if we can get an early walk, an early uh, guy on base here with no outs. Verlander setting up. Fastball at the knees. Suarez fights it off. Not a lot of good solid contact. I think uh, we had you got basically Crawford here through the first. Two innings is for only batter to really put anything on. I don't think that there's been a single Astro player that's even 
done anything but just a weak fly out. Pitch. Ooh, swing and a miss. Nasty little slider there. That thing just bent out of the zone, and Suarez was sort of a weak swing there. Yeah, that was a that was a nasty pitch by Verlander. That thing starts out and it starts out at you as a batter, then it's in the zone halfway there, which makes you think swing at it. Quick swing here on the first pitch. And he's safe. Okay. I got to lower this part down here. You guys can see what's actually going on. So great hustle there by Frazier. First pitch swinging. Grounds it out to this uh, shortstop and then just barely beats it out. Shortstop couldn't quite get enough on the throw there. This will bring Cal Raleigh, the most baseball name in this whole lineup, up to the plate. Cal also first pitch swinging and pops it right up in the infield. Astros had the shift on, but there is one guy over on that side, and he is able to make the play. Quick, quick swing in here. in there and I'll move my stupid face out of the way. There we go. All right, two outs now. First pitch ball here to Dylan Moore, hitting 197 on the year with five home runs, 16 RBIs. Definitely uh, would like to see both Frazier and Moore, if these two guys could get hot for our Mariners, that would sure go a long way to helping this team out. A lot of people look at second base and say, oh, let's see if we can upgrade here. That's one. But, boy, who are you going to get an upgrade with? The best solution at this point is for Frazier just to, to hit well, hit good. Thank you, Dragon, Dragon Dude. Appreciate you. Kind of you say. All right, we got uh, two outs here, 2-0 -oh count. Ooh, two times in this inning, you've had Eugenio Suarez and Mil Dylan Moore both with 2-0 two -oh, two counts, and they both got a fastball up in the zone, middle of the plate, and both just missed it. You know, a guy like Verlander, as good as he is, he's not going to give you a lot of those pitches or a lot of those opportunities. When you get that chance, you've got to put some good contact on the ball. I know it's easier said than done when he's throwing 96 up in the zone, but uh, you, that's where you look for the pitch in a spot. Now he comes right back with the slider. Tough little pitch. Dylan can only fight that thing off and foul it off. He's now in a 2-2 account here. It, it seemed like both of those guys were looking for the pitch. They just both missed the fastball a little bit. All right, here we go. Verlander with a wind. Strike three, you are out. Hit him with a nasty 10 to six curveball, and Moore was not looking for it. He was looking slider or fastball. That was a big old, that was a big, oh, they call that a big old bender. That's a big old bender right there. So we got a little pitcher's duel going on here. Those are always fun to watch. 
two of the better pitchers in all of baseball right now going head to head. That's what part of what makes this a fun matchup today. So we weren't counting on getting a lot of high scoring or anything like that. That's not surprising. But uh, we'll see what they can do here. If our, we're going to have to grind out some some runs today, it looks like. Verlander's pretty well on. Though he's, he's giving him a couple pitches here. He's giving him a little bit. He's not been, Gilbert's been completely nails. They, th three innings, they haven't even laid one solid swing on the ball, so. Yeah, he got him, Space City. That's a great, great, that's just, again, just a veteran pitch. You've been throwing nothing but fastball sliders for you know, two or three innings, and he's just very, very rarely worked in that curveball. And then you hit him with the curveball there, and that's the perfect time to do it. Absolutely just the perfect time to, to lay it in at that point. So three innings in the book, zero, zero. Logan Gilbert back on the mound. Looking smooth. Come on, Logan. Right back with a fastball top of the zone. Gets an early swing and miss here as he turns the lineup back over here. In a second, almost turns the lineup over. No, not yet. Got on the mound. What am I thinking? I guess we're only through two innings, aren't we? My bad. We're only through two innings. Another swing and a miss there. Starts him out with a fastball high, then comes back down with a slider at the knees, changing levels. I'll tell you guys, Gilbert is looking in, in control today. Here's the pitch. Oh, I let him have a good one there. First hard swing we've seen, and he gets it down for a base hit. Left it up in the zone, another fastball, same place as the first pitch. This time, uh, McCormick was ready for it. Nice piece of hitting, too. Two hardest hits balls in this game, being Crawford and uh, this hit here are both opposite field on these guys. It's the approach you have to take with these great pitchers. It's not like you're going up against anybody else where you're just free and easy taking your swings. You gotta be a little bit more defensive. Boy, we got to be careful here for Logan because you don't want to let the bottom of the lineup here get on base with just about to turn over. Bunt. And it's a great one. That's going to get him on. Not even a throw. What an awesome bunt. Third baseman was nowhere near. Must have been playing back. And he got it laid down. Goodness gracious. This is not a good start to the, to the third. Where was the third baseman on that play? I mean, he is complete. Suarez is, yeah, what is Suarez doing playing that deep? I guess you're not thinking they're going to play small ball this early. Why your physical? says, you ever play ball, Brandon? I did. I played all the way through into early high school, going back years into little leagues and whatnot, probably 15, 16 years before I finally was done. In my opinion, what is the worst ballpark in Major League Baseball? That's a great question. It's a great question. I'm not really a fan of the uh, Devil Rays. I, I think that just that whole stadium has no personality or feel to it. It just feels kind of, it feels very blah. It's always felt very blah down there. All right, nobody out. Oh, he hit a long fly ball. Will this stay in the, no, it, it just curls to left. Oh, my goodness. Maldonado put a swing on that one. Goodness. Hanging, hanging slider. And he just, just started to twist inside the pole. When he first hit that, that thing looked definitely fair. But it just started to peel back over to the left. He's got a mo two now. See if he can get induce him into a, into induce him into a double play. Got to figure this is going to be a, Oh, he came back with a fastball, 0-2 up in the zone. That is a ballsy pitch. Ballsy pitch after he just put one up on the other side. 
Looks like the major league trackers ahead of the my stream. <laughs> All right, O2 now. Get him to swing here. Looks like he gets straight. Let's see. Fastball outside off the plate. Gets him to swing. Strike out. Big K there. Big K there. The runners are left at first and second. One out. Now you're to Altuve at the top of the lineup. Altuve coming off two home runs last night. He's like Trout in a lot of ways. He's been a Mariner. Kind of a Mariner killer here throughout his career. Maldonado's got a nice swing, man. He's only hitting like 165, so it's probably just a little bit too much of the swing and misses. I, I, I reckon too many strikeouts, but uh, he's got an interesting swing. Here we go, Altuve. Altuve's first pitch swinging. Knocks it foul. The amount of power that Altuve's able to generate, it's like the guy's like legitimately 5'6", and the kind of power that he generates is just absurd at times. For that size. Gilbert with the stretch. A little low. Nice block by Cal Raleigh on the play. Down in the dirt. Runners hold. Watch fish quest. That was a great K there on Maldonado. That's just that's what you need. Keep the keep the because this this is going to be a low scoring game if you're going to win this at this point. It looks like Verlander's Verlander's on his stuff. It's not going to be like a couple months ago where you really jumped on him. Altuve here. We got one and one, one man out. Runners on first and second. Little low. Just kind of picking around the zone here on Altuve a bit. Uh, Dragon Dude says, do the Mariners have a playoff contention? They are in playoff contention, yeah. Absolutely they are right now. I think it's it's certainly, I believe, they have one of the easier schedules on the second half, um, which is going to open the door up them to, to be able to pack some wins on there. So, I, yeah, they are uh, absolutely, I would say, they are, are, are in playoff contention. Whew. Gilbert comes in with a 97 mile an hour flame ball that Altuve tries to do whatever he can, just kind of whiffs at it over his head like a little weak swing over his head. Usually don't get Altuve swinging that far outside the zone. That was a good four or five inches high. And Altuve, if you're going to go high, you're <laughs> five, you're five or six inches outside the zone. He's swinging at a ball nearly over his head at that point. Two two count, one out. Nice pitch. Hit on a line right to Crawford, who picks it up and throws it back to second base before the runner can get back to the play. Double play. Let's go. Come on now. That's how you do it, Ace. That's how you do it, Ace. Beautiful pitch, boy. That was a slider Altuve wasn't going to do anything for. He was down nearly at his knee when he swung it. Just a, a weak little line drive to Crawford, but right at Crawford where he was positioned. And uh, he's able to – the runner wasn't even really trying to get to third. He was just off the bag and got it back there. Watch Fisco says, I love Altuve. The way, he, uh, the way he and most of the Astros handled being caught cheating wrecked that, though. Oh, it did for me too. I mean, I, I can appreciate his game, but the, the whole way that they handled that scandal, as blatant as they were about the situation, and, and as far as they pushed it, you, you know, it's just, it's always fun when you see the cheaters just have this sense of, you know, uh, they just, you can tell they don't really care. <laughs> you know, it's like, where's the humility? Where's the at least apology? Where's the, but no, it's just, yeah, we're just not going to, we're going to try to brush over. If we don't speak about it, it didn't happen. And it, it just, I, I, it's my one thing that's that's that I'm coming back to baseball more now. I've always been into baseball, but there's been times of years through the years where it's just like with the cheating stuff, you go, come on, guys, you know, get this out of the game. This should not be a, there's a way to keep this out of the game. And that they're taking steps now with having the, the hitter catchers and pitchers to be able to just, you know, have the earpiece, but it drove me crazy. I, I hate that stuff. 
23 says, is Luis Torrens still rehabbing? It seems that Cal has been playing almost every game since he's been injured. I, I believe so. I haven't seen him out. I, I thought he was in, out in the lineup just before the All-Star break, but now that you mention it, I believe that is the case. Avery, the, Avery Sutherland says, let's go Mariners. Let's go Mariners, Averly. Avery, not Averly, Avery. Sorry, Avery. Can't speak today. Dragon uh, Dude says that Altuve still has power on the balls in the dirt. Yeah, he can sometimes get in there. Boy, that one, though, he just he couldn't get a read on where the ball was going to end up at the level it was, and you could just see him late on his swing really getting low trying to get that barrel to the ball. Just a great pitch by Gilbert. Fantastic pitch by Gilbert. Mark Thurston asked, does Randy Johnson have another pitch besides the fastball and slider? No. No. He might have developed something that I didn't track and monitor him as closely when he went to the Diamondbacks. And I know Schilling, for instance, had a late game cutter that he brought into his line. That, that's like what pitchers do as they get older, starting pitchers. They eventually add a cutter to their repertoire. He might have added something at that point in time. But when he was here, he was strictly fastball slider. And that was enough. <laughs> All right, Haggard up the plate now. How about Haggerty hitting hitting 302? How about the Hags? And as Verlander is doing with pretty much every pitch, every hitter in this lineup right now, getting them into a position of 02 early. And as the screen's reading, I got to take that bottom part out of the screen because we don't need to be seeing that. Gets him on, oh, see, yeah, just wasting no time. Yeah, Verlander just, I'm not going to waste any pitches. I'm not going to nibble. So that, that almost looked like a curve again there. He dropped the curve in on that 0-2. He's done that a couple times. That didn't look like, that looked like the curve. We saw him do that last inning where he doesn't throw it, but then when he features it, it's on these kind of counts where he's got a hitter looking fastball or slider, and then here comes the curveball. And the hitter's not going to, in that moment, even be able to fight off by what he's looking. It's hard enough to be looking for two different pitches you're trying to lock in on. Now trying to fit on that 10-6 on that to six curveball. So Crawford back up now here with one out. First pitch swinging. It's keeping the Mariners aggressive. 0-1. Dragon Dudes, did, did you see the Yankees cheated in 2017 too? I did see there was other teams doing it. I did. I mean, that's the problem with it is that some team does it, you allow it, other teams are going to start to do it. It's the same thing with the sticky balls and pitchers last year and how many years that was going where they're letting them use this tack stuff. It's like every other year it was something new for a while there. And it's just like the baseball, the purity of the stats are part of what brings people to it. It's one of the games that's most driven by stats and how you look at things, not just historically, but year to year. And if, if the numbers start to get skewed because of cheating, you, you erode the spirit of your game. Verlander with a wide 1-1 one, one here on Crawford. Gets him to swing a little bit out of his pitch out of the zone. Fastball high, and he fouls it off. 1-2. Just another Mariner batter here behind in the count. Behind in the count. I, I don't know how this guy's done it. He just must be one of those freaks. 39 years old, rocking a 1-8-9 ERA. I mean, they're showing Roger Clemens is the only other guy to have done it. And Rogers was Roger was juiced to the nines at the end of his career when he was putting up those numbers. Crawford, a weak little grounder to the second baseman on the one-two count, and he is thrown out. Mark says, so why can't Gilbert be liked for these two pitches? Not saying he's Randy Johnson, but Gilbert's nice. I don't – well, and I, I've heard those um, – People talking about that, Mark. So I, I've heard you're the same sort of criticism that's lobbed at, at Gilbert. Um, in fact, this has got some people saying, well, I'd rather have George Kirby because of the, the upside of explosive stuff, and he has more than just two pitches. From my standpoint, I don't, I don't sit in that same realm of things myself. So uh, we got Ty France up the plate now. Verlander with the pitch. Another fastball up in the middle, man. Verlander has lived up in the middle of the plate in the zone in the zone today at times and um, Mariner batters just cannot, they can't even put it in, in fair territory if they are able to hit it. So try France here now. Oh, one. 
Whew. Very nice pitch there. And, and France with a great eye to not swing at that. It looked like, I can't tell if that was a slider or a curve on that one because it was like an in-betweener, but that thing just slid right around the back door of the plate. Just barely, just tiptoeing around the back door of the plate. Here we go now, 1-1. One, one. France gets it up in the zone again. Some solid contact, but a little bit underneath the ball. Fly out to center field, and that will retire the side. So we are through three innings, each team with a couple of hits, no team with any runs. But Mark, I, I, do, I do land on the same place you land with this, where I say that I, I, I'm not going to hold it against Gilbert that he just has the two pitches. I've seen before pitchers, starting pitchers be amazing with two pitches. You don't need 15 million pitches in this sport to do stuff. And again, things can come along. I mentioned these older pitchers come, go through their career and they get into their 30s. A lot of them will develop a cutter. Um, it used to be back in the, in the late 90s, 2000s, um, they would be the split finger pitch. I think uh, pitchers started to go away from that because there were some worries about the injuries that that particular pitch could cause. But nonetheless, you can develop a third pitch later on. Um, you can eventually get, I mean, the, the other easy one, if you're not wanting to do the cutter, is you just get the changeup later, you know, if you want. And, and the changeup works very well off of a slider and a fastball. So those things can come along for me, Mark. You know, he's in year two, year two. But I don't hold it back on him. He's been dominant with those two pitches, one of the best starters in Major League Baseball, not just the American League this year. And in, in that being the case, then I, I got none, no such trepidations. Dragon Dude says uh, Nolan Ryan, too, is insane past 40 years old. Yeah, I mean, still throwing, what, no hitters in perfect games past 40. And, and man, the arm strength is the thing they say is sometimes the, the last thing to go. But... Even that, you usually do see with these guys when they move out of, if I'm age 33 to age 40 years old, I'm going to lose a couple of, I'm going to lose three or four RPMs. And maybe with Nolan, it was just that he was so legitimately a 100 mile an hour guy in his prime or, or, you know, dealing up around that area where he was 98, 99, that when he got into his 40s and he lost that three to four, he was still hitting 94, 95 at times on the gun. An obscene though, obscene to be able to hit that at that age and, and, and be able to go full nine innings, um, Pepper and that kind of heat in there like Nolan did. Yeah, Nolan was was insanely freakish in his longevity. Mark says, agreed, bro. Ah, uh, yeah, man. We're on the same page, Brian. I, I'm, it's like why I say, Mark, I, I have my untouchables if we're talking about a Soto trade or any other trade out there. And I, I don't know if I put the untouchable mark on Kirby as I would on Logan Gilbert at this point. You know, this, this is a building block, the rotation, not that the Kirby isn't as well, but... Gilbert's here. He's doing it. He is what he is. He's not in a pitch count. He's not on We know what he is. And I, we still don't quite know with where, you know, uh, Kirby's going to finish out to. He may be as dominant as Gilbert when it's all said and done. He may be more dominant, but I think it is a factor that still is uh, uncertain. Gilbert opened up now this inning here with, we got the lineup for uh, Pena up at the lineup here. And he gets him with a swing on a slider, a one. Raleigh catching today. Yep, Cal Raleigh's back in there. Some, as uh, was mentioned to you through the, looks like Terenz is being, uh, still being held out with rehab stuff. And Gilbert comes off the slider with a fastball out on the outside part of the plate for an 0-2 count there. That's the thing about Gilbert here too is he does a nice job of mixing the pitches. He doesn't just sit there and it's slider, slider, slider over and over. Or he's lean, lean, fastball, 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 and then you occasionally see a slider. He's constantly keeping them mixed up. So if you are going to have two pitches, you got to keep them mixed. He does that naturally. And, and that, that in itself will keep hitters um, off balance. And he just, just throw one in the dirt there now to get us to one and two. Working fast here with the wind. Swing and gets Pena to knock the ball off his foot. Pena's tough, though, so he doesn't even flinch. That look, man, that should have hurt a lot more. than Pena is really tough. He hit that thing right off the instep. Ow. Ow. Space Eddie, oh, thank you. If you do like what you listen to today, please hit that like button for me. It does help out this channel grow. All right, one, two pitch here. Swing and a miss. Nice slider in the dirt. Couldn't touch it. That's the sixth strikeout today for Logan Gilbert. Dominant. You get a pit, you get a hitter swinging at something in the dirt. That is a nasty pitch. Because those those hitters who've got the, the the eye, you know, and that's a lot of zone all that. But I mean, it's he's got a couple of pitches. That's one. He's got at least two or three strikeouts today on on pitches in the dirt.
just wonderful. I'm, I'm watching this cut up. They're showing of his strikeouts. Oh, it's such a beautiful thing. Ooh, we got a pitcher's duel today, folks. We got a pitcher's duel today. Dragon dude, Nolan Ryan threw a 212 pitch game. Yeah, he was. He, he's probably maybe one of the most freakish pitchers. Him and Koufax, probably two of the all time freakazoid, like, you know, just toolsy pitcher standpoint of things, you know. 0 2 pitch here. Gilbert is locked in right now. Works it far out of the zone on Jordan Alvarez. Jordan. Jordan Alvarez. One two pitch now, one out. Again goes goes inside now on him with the slider. Two two pitch now. Gets it in on his hands with a 97-mile-an-hour fastball that he bangs back into the crowd. Cal and Gilbert taking a little bit of time there. Get kind of kind. Of, he was working real fast there for a moment. He sort of slowed down his delivery and pace here a bit with Jordan. Obviously, maybe taking, uh, as he should, smartly so, a little bit more time to figure out what he's going to do with the, the big dog here in the lineup for the Astros, one of the big dogs in the lineup for them. He's kind of nibbled on these last two pitches. Let's see if he gives him something to hit here. 2-2 pitch, and here's the wind and delivery. And no, again, three straight pitches far outside the zone. He is a little bit of the overthrowing of the slider here. He got that, he got that strikeout out of the zone here on the first batter this inning, and I feel like he's, he's kind of feeling like, oh, I can get him to swing at these now. I'm going to keep throwing it like that. Got to get a little bit closer towards the plate on this. These are these are easy pitches for Jordan to uh, 283, I've got to check if Robbie's on the mound tomorrow. I do believe that that is the case, though. Thank you, thank you Dragon Dude. Here's the wide and delivery, 3-2 pitch, and it is off on the inside part of the plate of fastball, and that is going to be, I think, the first walk today for Logan with one out. Watch this question says, Gilbert's my new daddy. I love you, Pops. <laughs> I like to meet some Logan Gilbert, too, man. I like this, going going step for step with the old dog, with the gray beard, the old gray wolf. Step for step with Verlander. Right, we got to be careful here now. We got Bregman, Jordan on first base. Here's the pitch. We've got four straight sliders thrown here by Gilbert that have been far outside the zone. And Cal Raleigh is a little bit worried at this point in time. He's coming out to talk to his pitcher. Uh, these are uh, most of this game. These sliders have been very close and on point with it. I think what you got Cal and, and Crawford saying to him here, which is just come back and let's work. Let's work this. Get your fastballs going back here. Let's stop nibbling. You got the dominant stuff. Work it back in the zone. Don't be scared of the middle of this lineup, but I can very smart by Cal there. That's a veteran type move. Those were four straight sliders that were nowhere near the plate. Something, something's a little off. Take a breath. Take a breath here for a second, Logan, figure your thing out. Let's get back in on it. King Pookie Nation Alvarez says, do you use OBS or StreamYard? Uh, I'm using Streamlabs OBS right now. I've tended to favor that, though I'll maybe eventually make a transition to StreamYard. I've considered it. All right, 1-0 now here to Bergen. 94-mile-an-hour fastball, a couple inches off the plate. Logan kind of struggling to find his... Find the zone here at the moment. Boy, he was so locked in and just rolling and just, you know, just kind of struggling to find things a little bit. Come on now. I would think the Bergman's going to be taken here almost no matter what. Nope. Swung. Got him to swing. 95 mile an hour pitch is hit up in the air. Cal's underneath it as the second out on the play. Well, you want your lineup to be aggressive, but when the kid's not finding the zone on that, right? Like, make him find the zone. Don't don't bail him out, but I, it probably was just looking too tasty a fastball right up in the middle of the plate, and Bergman's like, "Yeah, give me some of that." Boy, that's nice out though. That's that's big. Space says he says a breggy bomb would be nice. <laughs> breggy bomb. 
Uh, Randall says, biggest knock on Gilbert got me is that the pitch count gets up to 100 quick. Not too many games past the sixth. How does he trim that back? Less, three to five less pitches an inning? Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. I would say, like, at least from what I'm seeing at times with him, there's there's a little bit of that starts to get to the nibble side of things rather than just trusting the zone. And on the other side of this, you're watching Verlander do this. He is pounding the zone today. He's not playing around. He's not messing around these pitchers. He's not following one known to anybody. He's going right at it. And he's trusting his stuff and his movement through the zone and his ability to mix the pitches in. And Gilbert at times with this, in this, at least with this particular inning, he's run into in a couple other times, just stay with your, stay within the zone on here. Don't, don't, because you can see him. Oh, and it's, we got a hard hit into the gap. This will make it into the gap. This is going to be extra bases. Jordan is clearing third base, and it looks like he's going to get home. And that is going to bring us to one nothing. Wonder, wonder if we're missing Julio out there in center field. If, if Julio gets to that ball a little bit quicker, not that he makes the catch, but he gets it and keeps it down to a two base. That's where uh, you're missing a little bit of that outfield defense out there with Dylan Moore trying to make it down because he took a long time. He let the ball get all the way into that wall. That, that's, a, that's a play where you're missing Julio. No doubt about it, Julio. I, I think Julio cuts that off. And if he cuts that off, he gets the ball into where at least it's a play at the plate. He may not be able to cut down Jordan at that point, but at least you've got the opportunity for it. Uh, King Pokemon Alvarez says, I use Stream StreamYard. OBS is difficult. I use StreamYard. OBS, OBS can be difficult. It does. It's got some problems with it that, that, that do drive me crazy. So I, I feel you there on that. Um, and I thought about it. I just started out with Streamlabs, so I just got used to it. And I originally was doing OBS that I, I just hated OBS. OBS was, was just kind of clunky. Uh, so we've got 0-1 now, or 1-1 now here on Gary L. Two outs, Houston up one nothing. Runner on second. But Randall, I don't know if there's a way he's going to be able to trim back those pitches unless he just gets real aggressive in the zone. And maybe he would tell you, oh, that ball's hit well as well. We've got another ball into the gap, folks. This is going to score him. Another double here. Another double. 2 nothing, Houston. Goodness. That's tough. So Gilbert just trying to get back into finding the zone. Uh, hanging slider there. No movement on that one. Way too high up in the zone. So it's a little bit like early on here when he was having the problems, the ending, he's throwing the slider, it goes into the dirt. So now he's like, I got to bring up my level here to try to get the slider up a little bit higher so I can get it into the zone. Then it hangs and then it sits up in the middle of the plate. And that's how you get to a, a hanging pitch in that situation to have him get hard. <laughs> it hit hard. <laughs> Avery, uh, how long is Julio out? I think he's day to day, if I'm not mistaken. Um, watch the quest is what's my favorite ballpark food, Brandon. I'm, I know it's kind of boring, but I actually do like the, like the popcorn because it's made in that certain kind of way that you don't get in any other places unless you go to like the movie theater, absent the butter on it. Uh, it's probably got that worst of kind of oils on it that you don't want to be eating, but it's tasty. And, uh, I like me some of that. The fries are okay, but they, they're so like, they're a lot. They're, they're a lot. I think they've added some things since I've recently been in there, though. So, what do you like? Yeah, Space City feeling good right now. All right, the wind and delivery here. Another hard hit ball. This ball's going to... Oh, what a great play by Dylan Moore. Dylan says, I heard what you said to me about Julio. I heard you talk your noise to me about Julio. Watch this, sucker. Watch this. Ball was hit on a line. Another hard hit ball off Logan Gilbert to dead center. It was just dying on the vine and it was falling and fading fast. Dylan turned on the Jets, laid out for that sucker and made the catch. That's big. Keeps him down to just two runs. Whew. That would have been bad. You get down 3-0 here and you start to really worry about, really worry about, uh, what are the orns in here? We got the orn. Goodness gracious. How's the orn gonna come in here? We're not even big enough for orn yet. <laughs> not even big enough. What a great play though. That was awesome. Just awesome. Let me get this. Let me get this out of here.
Do 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 do. Bye bye. Demo with a great patch. Anderson, hey man, thanks for keeping me entertained at work. Couldn't catch the last Hawks live, but glad you're going strong with the M streams. Yeah, man, we really can. I, I didn't think we were gonna get kind of the growth we did, but we shot. We're well over 200 subs now on the Mariners channel here, so gonna build this in, man. Do this. This will be a long-term thing. We'll have both channels kind of going on this side, and especially when we get some of the dead periods in football, like June and July can be. This is uh, nice to have something else to talk about, and I'm well, I love my Mariners, so let's go. King uh, Pokemon Alvarez says, StreamYard, it doesn't matter if you have a crappy PC. Yeah, that's true. I mean, no OBS, you need you need a lot, King Pokemon, to run the OB, Streamlabs OBS. But I went last year and got myself a pretty strong computer just to be able to push like that. And so I mine doesn't get battered down by that. But I agree with you, man. It's, it's a lot to navigate through to get your stuff right. Whereas StreamYard, it's just sort of put it on, hit it, let it go, and it's good. It's good to go. So Avery, I think Julio's day-to-day. But then, as they say, aren't we all? Are they, I wish the Mariners would do the Field of Dreams game this year. I'd love to see that. All right, here we go now, Winker. Come up here now and show us why we traded for you. <laughs> Prove yourself. <laughs> Winker coming up and being one of the rare Mariner batsmen to take a 1-0 pitch off Verlander here. See if we can start something up here. Verlander with the Knicks. And he swings on the second pitch and gets really far under it. Astro right fielder fights the sun, but makes the catch. Space City, the Astros do love scoring with two outs. That's something that we struggle with. The, we, we can score runs, but our clutch hitting aspect has not been great as of recent. But Anderson, thanks for jumping on in here, man. Appreciate you being part of this and, uh, you know, get you back on the Hawks Nest here soon, too. Avery said I was there last for April and I didn't see any fries. That was a whole thing that they did for years where they used to give out free fries to fans. Like during the telecast. They stopped that. It wasn't the garlic fries. I thought that was like a mainstay there. Did they take out the garlic fries? Well, it's not a big loss in my book at that point. Because those things were dripping with grease. And you could not talk to anybody within 10 feet for about five hours after eating those things. Because, holy Lord, your breath stunk. I could make children cry if I just went up to them and went, oh. All right, we got uh, Santana already down to 0-1 here on Verlander. There we go, nice. Takes a minute there. Verlander was taking a little bit of extra time. Get yourself comfortable. Verlander with the wind here, 0-1. Knocked back out of play. Boy, Verlander with only 40 pitches here. He is, he is being very efficient today. This is scary Verlander we're watching right now. Twenty three wins. Uh, YouTube gonna do something about the spam bots? I don't know, man. They have uh, they have some things set up, but they they always find their way around one way or another. Santana with the O uh, two pitch. Oh, what a nasty pitch by Verlander! What a just disgusting pitch by Verlander! And and somehow Santana doesn't swing at it. Another one of those O two curveballs. It looks like drop straight to the man. We got the benefit of a nice call in that one. That one looked like it could have been easily have called a strike three. I don't know if we're going to touch Verlander today, though. That This is. And then he just hits it meekly on the ground to the right side. Verlander there to cover. Two outs. Yeah, Verlander's just throwing some just naughty stuff right now. Naughty like these bots. Naughty like these bots, I tell you. Let me see if I can. I think I can set. See if I can put this setting on to. Yeah, they don't let you do that. So I don't know. It's always weird with them. Watch Fizz Quest. I agree. The popcorn's pretty good. I usually get caramel corn on the way in. Sometimes hot peanuts. Hot peanuts are good too. Both of those are good choices. Both of those are solid choices. The popcorn for me, I just you get the big one, just sit there and just be eating it the whole game, and kind of I got a beer in one hand and my popcorn in the other. I'm like I'm a happy camper at that point. Eugenio Suarez up, and he takes the first pitch curveball. Verlander being a little careful with Eugenio. He dropped a curveball on him in the last one. Man, that's how he got him last time. Jesus, he's 
He's money right now. I love the way Verlander's pitching this game. Comes back with a look like another curveball. Got Suarez to swing out of the zone. 0-2. Mark Thurston, if they if you build it, they will come. If you build it, they will come. I'd love to see the Mariners. I think that's the greatest idea that Major League Baseball had last year to do do the games at the Field of Dreams field. I mean, that's just I thought it was all it was just just that that's like to me, just like, yes, that's getting it right, baseball. I would love to see the Mariners out there in the cornfields. All right, we got one, two now, two outs. Astros up two nothing. Verlander with 45 pitches in the game, working efficiently. Figure he's going to come back to that curve here, huh? Oh, he comes back fastball. I haven't been able to guess what he's throwing at all this game. That shows you how good he's mixing these pitches up. Doesn't give him to swing out of the zone, though. Nice job. Dragon Dude says uh, St. Louis is trading for Soto. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Here we go, 2-2 two -two pitch. Swing and a miss on a 97 mile on a fastball over the top end of the plate. It's, it's right there, man. That's a pitch that Suarez should be able to move in on and hit. But it's, it's coming in 97. It's hard to hit those when they're that fast. Well done by uh, Verlander as he does retire the side. Uh, King Pokemon Nation Alvarez says, you're a Seahawk fan? I do a Seahawk. My main channel, King Pokemon, is uh, Hawk's Nest. So that's uh, what my original deal was. My original thing. Devin Martzall. What's up, Devin? Says, hey, Brandon, hope all is well. How many subscribers do you have to have or how does it work for the Super Chat? Oh, uh, Devin, it's, we do, um, I've got to get it to 1,000 to get to the point where I can get donations. So we'll be doing, uh, but I'm going to be doing a lot of these streams. So hopefully we'll work our way up, uh, we'll work our way up to getting up there very soon. You know what I mean? But yeah, I got to, got to get to the, the cool 1,000, 1,000 period be able, before I can click that in. I think I could probably put my, um, I got to find a way to hook up my, my donation thing from, uh, from, from Twitch onto this, but it's all good, man. For the love of the game, Devin, for the love of the game. <laughs> Ethan says, Hey, 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 Mariner stream. You know what, Ethan? We gotta, we gotta expand our wings here a little bit. Ethan says we need Verlander's dad, Kyle Lewis in there. Facts. Facts. Exactly. I thought I was, I'm surprised we don't have Lewis in the lineup considering you don't have Julio in the lineup. I mean, you could use a little bit more pop right now. You're not making it, you're making it a little easier on Verlander with what you're trotting out there in this particular game. Mark Thurston says this guy 39 with no HGH doing this is filthy. Oh, it is. I, I, and I don't have an explanation for it because I could tell with, with Roger, Roger was a lot like Barry where you were watching their head size grow two times bigger than it was when they were in their late twenties and something wasn't adding up to that. I, I don't see that with Verlander. He doesn't look all yoked up like out of his mind. I mean, he's just got a naturally pretty big frame to him and maybe he's just, you know, and there have been, as we spoke about with like a, a guy like uh, Nolan Ryan, you know, there have been those guys in, in, in history that have been able to pitch deep into their careers, starting pitchers, so I, it does make some sense from that angle of it. Boy, to be throwing 97 at 39 years old, you're in the fourth inning of, of a baseball game throwing 90, like, ugh. All right, we got uh, top of the fifth inning now. Myers comes out with a nice little 0-1 fastball here to Myers. Damn, Myers hits the second pitch, a slider on the inside part of the plate into, into the corner, into the, into the corner for a double. Jeez. Gilbert's getting hit hard here right now. I think we got to get the bullpen up at this point. That's about the fourth straight batter that's put a good hard swing on him. I don't know what's. I don't know if Houston's just getting real comfortable with him right now with his pitches, but they're they are all over it at this moment with what he's throwing. And boy, again, the bottom of the lineup like you had happen last time. This is what led to some problems last time is you let the bottom of the lineup start to hit and get on base. And then you're dealing with the top of the lineup, the crushers of this lineup with, with guys on. Uh, Washington Beast Quest is remember the future theme game, Ken Griffey era. Everyone was sleeveless and silver if memory serves. That's right. 
Got a little bit of a bunt here. <laughs> a little bit of a bump. All right. So they do a bunt. Astros know this game might be won with the third run, might win this thing. Moves the runner over to third. And then you're turning it over to the top of the lineup. Makes some sense there. Astros playing some small ball today. Ethan says, I'll tune back in. I'll try and tune back in later. Go Mariners. Go Mariners, Ethan. Thanks for jumping in. Randy says, I heard Verlander on the Adrenochrome. Gets it from Hollywood Starlight. Just a rumor, though. Hmm. Well, that would then make at least some sense, Randall. And Adrenochrome doesn't make your head grow. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that'd explain it. <laughs> All right, I'll two of you up. Oh, come on. Okay, swung. Good. I was like, they, they've got to they've got to check with the ump on first on that. He definitely went through the zone. Oh, one there on the first pitch. Mariners playing up in the infield here. They don't want to give up a run. And you know, Gilbert's going to try to get himself a strikeout here. Dragon Dude says, "Is the bullpen warming up for the Mariners?" Not that I've seen yet, Dragon Dude. Doesn't look like they got anybody going yet. Watch this question. If this is solely the fault of the all-star break facts. We were so hot. And then this damn all-star break. I do remember watching this quest though, that future era. They do the seventies night thing too. I thought that was cool. Baseball's got room for that to have a little bit of uh, personality to its spirit in the way they go. They don't have to be staunchy about it. All right. One, two pitch here. Gilbert looking in. Swing and a miss. 97 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone. Gets Al Tuve to K. Big time strikeout. Huge. Huge. If you saw last name of Verlander, it's hard to reach 97 miles an hour at the top of the zone as a hitter. You got to get that swing started very, very early. Right, let's see if Gilbert can keep the damage down. Jeremy Pena up to bat now. Two outs. Runner on third. 2 nothing. Houston. Top of the fifth. Here's the delivery. A little slider inside. 1-0. Oh. Grug says nothing would make more sense than Astros taking adrenochrome. <laughs> it's a short leap, Grug. From, uh, but, oh, line shot. Winker there. Oh, finishes out just like last inning. A hard shot that looked like trouble off the bat, but then fell at the last second there into Winker's glove. He's well positioned on the play. The inning is over. Nice job by Winker to work himself out of some trouble there. Great job by the kid. It would be. It's a small leap, my man, from buzzers in your jersey to adrenochrome. I'm telling you. It's a, it's a slippery slope that you start to slide down when you begin that. <laughs> yeah, nice job by Gilbert today, man. He, uh, he was nails for the first three or four innings. Now, the last two innings, he's had to kind of find his way through with his stuff. His location's not been where he's wanted it to be. Batters are putting some hard swings on balls. Find yourself through now. Where's your resiliency? And that's what he showed through these last couple of innings. It wasn't as purely dominant as it was out the gate. And, and good on him. Very good on him. And you're right, uh, Space City. Astros bats are starting to warm up a little bit. Even that last swing was well, well hit there. If I'm the Mariners, I'm, I'm looking at... Maybe starting the bullpen up a little bit if I think I can get to, to Verlander here to a degree. Though, I will say this. We don't have Verlander on any kind of pitch count at this point. He's thrown, what, 45 pitches. So, you know, you're, you're not getting into that Astro bullpen anytime soon necessarily by how this game's playing out at the moment. I'm going to be right back here, guys. Uh, just get some more coffee.
righty. Here we go, Adam Frazier. Let's go, buddy. 1-0 count. 1-0 count. Man, this game's flying by. An hour, we're through five innings. Hit hard, deep. Right field. Right fielder falling back of the track, and it falls. He just got a little bit under it. Nice swing, just a little bit underneath it on the 1-0 pitch. Oh, that looked good off the bat. I agree, Dragon Dude. I'd get a lefty up for Jordan right now. I, I would start to work the, the bullpen a little bit. I, I'm not sure Logan, you know, he's fought through five innings. He's looked good. He's done well. It's just I, I think he's right now. You might benefit from that. Cal Raleigh up to the plate now. 1-0 pitch, fastball outside. Come on, men's. Let's go. Let's get a fight up here against Verlander. Let's, like, make this tough on him. First inning, 13 pitches. Second inning, 13 pitches. 10, innings in the th 10 pitches in the third inning. 11 pitches in the fourth inning. You're not making him work. 2-0. Cal Raleigh's making him work. Cal's making him work. I'll tell you that. Anderson is naturally a Blue Jays fan because I live in Toronto, but I do enjoy Mariner games due to the Seattle Association. It's been interesting watching the rivalry kind of grow between Blue Jays and Mariners in recent years. 2-0 pitch, high up in the zone, fastball, 95 miles an hour, and he only can kind of just fight it off. Gets him to swing out of zone on 2-0. Just must have looked too fat. One thing's for sure is just the Mariner hitters have not been able to do anything with the fastball up in the up right. It's right in the middle of the plate. He's not hitting it on the edges. It's in the middle of the plate, up of the zone, and they just can't do anything with it. 2-1 pitch. Oh, Cal gets a horrible call. Horrible call on the 2-1 pitch. Strike. That thing looked out of the zone at the top of the zone. 2-2. Two, two. That's one where it's like, look, the guy's been nails all day and he throws out of the zone. Let's not help him, ump. Let's not help him, blue. 2-2 two, two pitch now. The line, the delivery. Strike three. Hit him with that curveball top of the zone. He comes with that curveball on you on 2 2 0 2 1 2 doesn't matter. Those hitters just don't, there's nothing they can do with it, but just look at it. I've watched three, three, three players do it already out the gate here. Another, another, rough, enough, another rough inning for our M's here. Curveball inside, 1-0 now. Throwing more up, hitting 196 on the year. The line, the delivery. Swing and a miss. Another one of those patented Verlander fastballs at the top of the zone that the Mariner hitters continue to not be able to do much with. I, you would think you'd get into like the, by, by the second the second time the lineups turned around that somebody in that building would say, "Hey guys, lock in on the up fa upper fastball. Just look there, stay there on your. On, he's gonna at one point during the during the at bat throw probably a 96 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone. Lock in on your your swing spot right there and try to put a hard hit there. Don't don't be worrying about the curves or you know what he tries to do with sliders at the knees or anything. Like just don't if, if he's gonna hit those spots, he's gonna hit them." On a great pitcher like this, though, I try to just really lock in on a small zone where I'm going to look to try to hit the ball hard if it goes there. And again, right back there, 97 miles an hour, top of the zone, middle of the plate, and another swing and a miss. I'm literally talking about this, and you, you go, I, I know it's hard at 97 to do anything with it, but if I'm a major league ball player and I go, I'm looking at just a bread box area, and I'm going to look for just a fastball in that bread box area. I, is it is it absurd for me to to expect that you want to have your hitters be able to hit that bread box at that point, be able to at least put a swing on that? And we've seen all day long Mariner batters swing and miss on those pitches, or or barely make contact, or if they do make contact, it's just a foul going back. And this is part of what makes Verlander as tough as he is. But at the same point in time, from a, an approach standpoint, why you wouldn't lock into that place? That's what hitters do. That's what good hitters do. You go, what, what were you looking for? I was looking for a fastball on the outside part of the plate. What were you looking for? I was looking for a curveball middle in. You know, I'm not seeing him looking for any 
and he pitches to that spot, and you're seeing some kind of wild swings in there because of it, in my opinion. Las Vegas Quest does is I looked up the turn the clock a game, uh, turn the clock ahead game. It was 1999. It was a bold look at baseball in 2027. Sometime between now and then, all shirts will become sleeveless. Golf Digest did an article about it. <laughs> we'll see. I could see him going sleeveless. That makes sense. No, I'll tell you what, the amount of, uh, the amount of uh, skin cancer you're going to get from these ball players. I mean, Major League Baseball players doing 162 games outdoors sleeveless. I know they play a lot of night games, but that's a lot of SPF. 2A3 says Verlander's probably going to go nine with how he's pitching. That's definitely not a good thing. Yeah, if you're not in a place right now where you're anywhere near, where we, if we can just work through an inning of getting him to you know throw a few extra pitches here, we can maybe get into their bullpen. He's setting himself up right now for a CG. This is looking very CG. Mark says, yikes, where's the human Verlander we saw last time? My God, I know, man. We were, we were killing him last time, weren't we? But he has been locked in all day. All day. And he's not messed around. I mean, you know, he's giving these guys strikes. He's not nibbling at the edges. He's not getting them to swing out of zone, really. At the end of the day, he's, he's saying, it's going to be in the zone. What are you going to do with it? And Gilbert is on the hill here to start the sixth. Looks like it's a little foul there off the first pitch from Jordan. 77 pitches here for Gilbert. Slider in the dirt on the number two pitch. One and one. Watch your Visquest is uh, Major League's weird. You'd also intuitively think a Major Leaguer could beat the shift. I would. Both of these two things do bother me, Watch your Visquest, on a level of these were things pro players used to be able to kind of do a little bit better than I think they do now. Um, I, I think some of it gets blamed to the fact these guys look for the big swing and boy, the Mariners are on Uber shift. We almost got four guys to one side of the one side of the diamond. Gilbert with the two one swing and a miss on the slider. But yeah, watch this course. That's I have a little more faith uh, understanding on the shift stuff because you can understand it with how pitchers pitch and, and where the ball ends up. It's like it's hard to hit a ball the other way that's in on your hands at 97 miles an hour. I mean, that's just the truth. This ball's hit high up in the air, skied. Moore sits under it, and then we've got our first out here of the sixth inning. So I, I, there's times where I can have a little more room for understanding with, with the difficulties in beating the shift with how the pitcher might pitch to you. But – I'm, I get more annoyed even on the not locking into a spot in the zone and then locking into a pitch within that spot when this pitcher is showing a high tendency to that point. Verlander's thrown most of his pitches in this game, I would reckon, have been those high fastballs middle of the plate. And if that guy's not nibbling the black and he's getting all white there, he's getting big fatty chunks of the white part of the plate, you know, you should be able to put a good strong swing on that if you're locking in. And we'll see if once they get to now into through with the third time through the order here, if maybe these Mariner batters start to maybe like lock in a little bit more on that high side of the zone and what's happening in the middle part of the plate. Hit up high in the air there. 97 mile an hour fastball by Gilbert. Get some 0-2. Dragon Dude says Breggy Bomb. I don't want a Breggy Bomb. No Breggy Bombs. <laughs> no Breggy Bombs. All right, let's see if he tries to give him some nasty slider here out of the zone. 0-2. Oh, he does indeed. Gets it down the dirt. 1-2. and two. Dragon says, my friend has Gilbert in our fantasy league. It's tough since he's doing so good. Yeah, that's a good fantasy pickup by your buddy. All right, 1-2. Gilbert with the wind. Swing and a miss. 85-mile-an-hour slider out at the knees. Very well located Bregman's got to swing at that pitch he's not going to do anything with it that's that's an absolute perfect one two type pitch that you'd love to throw just get a just get some flailing great pitch by Gilbert way to bounce back this inning this is looking a little bit more like what we saw to Gilbert through the first couple of innings he's done an awesome job with this very difficult Houston lineup right now keeping him to two runs here Kyle Tucker up at the plate now one for two with an RBI double in the fourth. Gilbert with the wind. Swing and a miss. 96 mile an hour fastball off the plate. Gilbert hit all the way up at 98 today on the high side. 
77 on the low. 01 delivery. Down in the dirt, almost bounces up and hits Tucker in the face. <laughs> Does that count as a hits batter? If, it, if, he, if he hits it up in the dirt and it bounces off the dirt up and hits the batter in the face, technically it's hit the ground first, right? 1-1. One, one. Take a little bit of time to figure out what they want to call here. Gilbert steps off the mound. Let's reset through a little bit. Well, she says, yeah, well, she first question says, yeah, pitching has gotten crazy. I remember thinking during the Bonds and McGuire, someday someone will hit 100 home runs, but the dominance is kind of reversed. It has. I, I, there's a couple of things I think that have factored into that Wish Fish Quest. I think that the steroid era ending and that them testing for that has been a big part of that. I think that the Greeny era ending, right? All of the uppers and stuff that those guys used to use to get them to keep them on point and, and, and uh, juiced through whole game. 2-1 delivery. Swing. On the ground out there to second in the shift. Easily collected by Mr. Frazier, who throws him out. So Gilbert gets through a nice inning of work there. Easy peasy. We get down through the bottom of the six. But Fish Quest, I think you had the steroid era ends, and right as the steroid era ends, the greeny era ends. And the greeny era is one that's not talked about as much, but those guys were taking poppers all the way back to the 70s. I mean, that stuff was keeping them amped. And baseball is such a game of a languid game that can cause you at times to get a little, you know, not just you, you just sort of tune out. It's hard to keep your concentration up for 162 games. That's what makes it a little bit different than your average type of sport. And I think that those two things going out definitely hindered hitting at that point in time to a big degree. Those, it really offset that stuff in a major way. Um, and I think that that's baseball, even to this day, Washington Fisk West, 20 years later after the steroid era, is still trying to kind of catch back up to a, a normal, normal place. You know, what's our, what's our, you know, what's, what's the best balance here between pitching and hitting. And they're trying to take some steps. You've seen them mess with the baseballs to make them harder at times. And they're trying to, maybe we need to lower the mound. I don't know what the answer is going to be on that, but I think it, maybe it'll help. You know, the shift being removed from baseball next year might help. Um, that's certainly going to up some runs, no doubt about it. And we just saw in that play with Dylan Moore there out and he's damn near out in right field when he's getting that grounder. If he's playing more of a normal second base position at that point, there's going to be more balls to get through. There's going to be more scoring. And I would look for next year's scoring to go up hugely if they can't do that shift. D-Boy, what is up? D-Boy's in the house. My man, what's up? Good to see you in on the uh, crow's nest, man. Good to see you on the other side of the coin over here. Hope you're doing, hope you're doing well. We're getting these Mariner streams going up here more often now. And uh, hopefully we'll get up a couple of week for you guys on this because I want to watch these games. So uh, if I'm going to be watching them, I might as well be watching with you guys. Talk and shop, right? Space City fast innings. Yeah, these pitchers are working well today. Nobody's messing around. Other than those couple innings where Logan was kind of struggling to find himself a little bit there. They've, these guys have worked fast. They've stayed ahead of the count. They've not played around. It's good to see you there, D-Boy. All right, Verlander's set to go here at the bottom of the six. Working through uh, just the back uh, bottom of the lineup here as we'll turn this over. He's been efficient every single inning. Sam Haggerty at the plate. Haggerty with a check swing foul. Didn't want to go, went, fouled it off. Haggerty stuck out in the third. Debo says, nice, I'm loving it. Let's go Mariners. Let's go Mariners, D-Boy. I love me my man, love me my mems. I've been meaning to do this channel for a while and finally got the, the time to come around and do it. All right. Verlander with a wind and the delivery. Another check swing fouled off. Haggerty, you guys. I know he's hard to hit. Don't make it easier for him. A ball far out the zone. He just had a check. He just had a check swing foul on the previous pitch and did the very same thing on the second pitch. Swing or don't, man. Yeah, this can be a curve. Yep. That's what he loves, that 0-2 curve where the pitcher thinks he's getting a ball, the hitter thinks he's getting a ball out of the zone, and Verlander's like, I'm not wasting a pitch. And then he just drops the curve in there, and then the hitter usually can't do anything with it. Haggerty was able to at least fend it off. But he 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 dropped that that curve right into the zone. 0-2, here's the wind, the delivery. Fastball high. Nice eye there by Haggerty. 
Nice job not check swinging. Boy, if you can get Haggerty on here as your the opening batter in this lineup here in this opening inning, that'd be big. Bites off a real tough pitch there. One and two. Nice swing. Nice job there keeping that off. That was an easy pitch. A lot of movement on that pitch. Started up at the top of the zone and ended up at the bottom of the zone. All right, kid. I'm looking for that curveball here again. I'm looking for that big humping curveball. Fastball, swing and a miss. I haven't called one pitch Verlander said right all game. That just shows you how good a job he's doing of mixing these pitches up. What a great, great call for a fastball there. There's no way the hitter's looking fastball. It's, this has been a gem. Justin has definitely pitched a gem here today. This is vintage Verlander. Exploding fastball, slider that's hard to, hard to read, and a curveball that he mixes in is just a death stroke. Crawford up now, 1-0, takes it off just off the pitch, off the uh, edge of the plate. One zero, the wind, the delivery, another another pitch off, two and zero, nowhere near. Verlander being a little, uh, a little careful with uh, Crawford. A little careful with Croft. Two zero now. Got to figure that Crawford's taken here all the way. No, he swings. Oh. the Mariners' approach today. Look, Verlander's not been Verlander has been amazing, no doubt about it. But, you know, the Mariners approach today has been a little bit weird and wonky as far as what's going through the hitter's mind and what is their plan at the plate. You know, Crawford, you're the top of the lineup, you're the leadoff hitter, you've got a 2-0 count on a pitcher who's not missed at all all day long. Why are you swinging on 2-0? I, I To me, that's a pitch there that you take. All right, Ty France now up with two outs. You know, Verlander's been nails, but but this Mariner lineup has not made it hard on him either. You know, they've not they've not forced him to work. They've taken some bad swings. Their approach has been a little bit weird, and that's that certainly is um, part of why you also have no runs in this in this ball game. One zero count here on to Ty France. The wind, the delivery. 97 mile an hour pitch just out of the zone high and France swings at it, fouls it up and it's caught by the first baseman that will retire the side. Whew. Boy, some, uh, some tough swings today on Verlander. Mariners have a mere two hits through six innings and it's, uh, it's been rough. He is all over them right now. Yeah, J J V is killing his base city. I mean, it's uh, again though. Even on that there to France though, you know, you 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 have a one zero count if you're tied France. So you have a little bit of an early advantage in the count if you're the hitter. You know, okay, let's make the pitcher now throw a strike. And instead, you swing out of the zone and uh, you pop it up. Just odd, odd, um, odd a bit a bit of an odd approach. And I know Ty's like, look, I'm getting a fastball. I don't get a lot of these. And it's in the middle of the plate. I got to get it. I got to swing. Uh, Fish Quest says Verlander has hopped up on V. That was a boy's reference if it gives you superpowers. He does. He's walking that temp V. Maybe he's on the permanent V since he's 39 and keep doing this. Yeah, you're getting nine innings of Verlander today. That's for sure. And he gets to work through somewhat of the middle of the bottom of the lineup through the rest of this game. Is Julio able to pitch hit? Julio with a broken, with a bum wrist right now, I'll take over what we're seeing in this lineup. <laughs> Brash coming in. Makes sense. Gilbert's up there as far as his pitch count goes. Makes sense. 
Mark says, I know it's early, but wife cut up some lime and we're tequila shot number three. She does not like Verlander. I tried to warn her. <laughs> hey, I, I understandable, man. The shots are going to need to be adding more. We're going to watch more of this, the game going more like this. We're not putting up much of a fight as far as our batters are concerned in this particular game. And you're doing this again. Verlander watching this game with a 1-8-9 ERA. I mean, the kid, guys, has been the best starting pitcher in baseball. So to, to be flailing and to not do well against that kind of pitcher is, is not necessarily some horrific thing for our Mariners. But you can't control certain things. You can't have certain amounts of giving yourself advantages and not, not making it easier on that pitcher. And you, you've taken an ace today, and you have made the game a little bit easier on a guy who's absolutely on his game. And that's how you get to a result of only two, two hits over the course of a game. Only really one hard hit, I think. Fish Quest is on the rum and coke. So we got some tequila shots going. We got some rum and coke going. <laughs> and a big one at that says Fish Quest. A <laughs> big rum and coke <laughs> in the big glass. All right, so Gilbert, a good day today. Six innings, eight Ks, only two earned runs against a very tough Astros lineup. I thought he played really well. Um, had a little bit of a struggle there through a couple of innings where he was kind of needing to find himself. But as you know, Randall McGinnon was asking about this, how could he lower his pitch count? How can he get deeper into games? Well, get through those two or three inning spots where you seem to get yourself in a bind and seemingly in a bind a bit because you're doing a little bit too much nibbling. You're trying to overthrow that slider a little bit too much. And you can see the evidence of this of when that slider starts to go consistently in the dirt as opposed to catching, catching portions of the plate. All right, Brash has got his man in 0-2 here. Brash coming with a nice live arm. Bay City says beer for me. All right. It's kind of a beer day over here on the east, on the east side. It's hot. It's more of like beer beer-like day. All right, Guriel is up 0-2 now. Come on, Brash. Let's give our hitters a chance here. The wine delivery, a little weak knobber out there to second base. Frazier's got it. One out. Literally five in Texas. They say it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> That's the nice part about being on the West Coast is we can always say, hey, it's over on the East Coast, it's five. So it's like it's five for here. So we can get to drinking, right? All right, here we go. McCormick up now. Brash throwing a lot of sliders here. It's about every pitch he's thrown has been a slider. The line, the delivery, 1-0. Again, inside on the slider, 2-0. Kind of trying to work it in there on McCormick a little bit. Seems like that's how the Mariners pitchers have pitched him today, too, is just get it in on his hands. It's kind of interesting, too, because McCormick actually stands pretty far off the plate. Another slider that swings far wide away. So we've got a 3-0 count now. Come on, Brash. You've got to come in and throw strikes. Don't mess around. Just come in, toss some strikes. And take a second there. This is low on a 98 mile on her fastball, so that will draw a walk here to McCormick. And that brings up Myers, who has been a little bit of a thorn in the Mariners' side today. It's two for two. And he's been really the uh, a guy that's really kind of kicked it off for Houston as far as generating their runs go, being that guy to get on base. Myers has up until this point. He's been a tough out. Rash gets set. And again, swings it wide. Five straight balls by Brash. Come on, kid. 
I don't know why you call a slider there initially, too. He's, he's struggling to find the plate. Get him a fastball. Come on. 1 0 count. There we go. 98 mile an hour fastball. This, uh, the hitters at one point, they see or see four or five straight balls. They're just, they're going to, especially the bottom of the lineup, guys. They're not swinging at that point. This isn't the middle of the order lineup. So just, you know, groove a fastball in there. He's going to take it. All right. One, one, one here. Runner on first, nobody out. Two, nothing, Houston. Great pitch. 98 mile an hour fastball. Just right at the bottom part of the knees. Middle of the plate, bottom part of the knees. Myers ain't doing nothing with that. Let's get him to roll one of those sliders over right to shortstop here. That's what we're looking for. One, two count. Brash is set. Looks over at first. Slider bounces it high up off the plate. Great job by Fred. Did he get him? He got him. Yeah. Get it. What a play by Frazier. So the the, the ball is a, it's a nasty slider. I mean, and, and the, the batter gets gets just a just enough on the bat, but he puts it right in the dirt hard off the hit. So the ball bounces way high up in the air. Frazier's got to sit there and kind of wait on it. The runner's coming, coming. Frazier's got to make an instantaneous moment decision there to catch the ball, tag the runner, and then try to throw it to first. And he pulls it off. There's a lot of coordination there to do that all in just one second as that's all kind of happening. And that ball is probably, from Frazier's standpoint, sitting up in the air as it's been hit up in the air for like 10 minutes. And he's feeling that runner run right past his face. But a fantastic play by Frazier. Gets the tag, then just barely gets the runner. I'm sure they're going to probably try to review that one potentially if it's not uh, on point. But a great play uh, by Frazier there. Keeps this game close. You're within two runs. Nice job. Nice job, Brash. Stephen uh, Catterall says, what's the deal with Julio? So, Stephen, um, I'm making some guesses here because, of course, the Mariners haven't exactly released a, a ton of information on this. But if you um, you can go back and you actually can see it in my Julio Rodriguez video that I just did on the channel. At the end of the video, I actually included footage of the play that you can see him stealing the base and his, his finger gets, his hand gets caught, his wrist gets caught awkwardly on the foot, I believe it is, of the defender who's trying to, to put the tag down. And you saw his hand kind of twist awkwardly there, and it was worrisome. But then he went out, of course, and, and did, did do the home run contest and played in the All-Star game. But it does seem like, especially after he hits 50 straight damn homers in that, in that um, home run contest, that he certainly, if there was already a little bit of sore, that probably took it up a little bit of a notch. And so I imagine that they went, okay, look, you played a lot of games through the first half already. You're, we don't want you to wear down through the second half. You got a little soreness to a wrist right now. Maybe this is as good a time as any to give you a couple games below on top of having the all-star break um, just to keep you fresh through the second half of the career, the second half of the season. But if there's anything serious, he would have gone on probably more of the 15-day DL or beyond that, um, which hasn't, hasn't happened yet. So that's good. 283 says he's safe, but it was a nice play. I don't know. They, wouldn't the Astros have reviewed it? Maybe not. 81 home runs. Thank you, David. 81. I mean, if you already had like a, a, even a half bit sore wrist, like if your wrist was even just a little tight and you went out there and hit 81 home runs, probably going to make a little bit more sore for the next couple of days after that, right? Oh, he's safe. Okay, so the, they came back. They did review it. My bad. God, I'm not paying attention. David says, but who's counting? <laughs> That's right. So it was a great play by Brash, and uh, oh, they hit the they hit the the runner with the ball. <laughs> That's what you get for running that running that grounder out. All right, 0-1 here. We're back on here with the Mariners still on the field. Didn't retire. They came back. So 0-1 swing and a miss on Maldonado. 97 mile an hour heat on the corner. Uh, Steven says, if that's the case, then Jerry needs to get some bats. Well, if, if, if he's going to definitely take some time to get back to being able to play, if it is a 15 day DL situation or something, they've got to do Julio is a big part of your lineup right now. And to lose them, you don't have enough guys. Hanniger's not out there. Lewis isn't full gore yet. 
Yeah, Kelnick's out in AAA. Swing and a miss by Maldonado. Strike three, got him to whiff on a ball far outside the zone. I think it's Maldonado. He's got a good stroke, but he just has no plate discipline as far as where what's a strike and what's not a strike. But, uh, yes, I agree with you, Stephen. I think that that's definitely more opened up. If, and they the team knows more about this than we do. But if there's more of a serious situation here with Julio where you think this is a two two-week thing, a three-week thing, then let's go get some more pop into this lineup at that point. Uh, you, you know, the lineup has always been a little bit on the edge throughout the course of this year as, as far as doing just enough as it is. Your, your, your rotation has been much more consistent and better than where your lineup's been this season. And I know that DePoto's talking about adding another arm in this rotation and, and much just because of the George Kirby thing, but you can maybe make the argument you got to do, do a couple of things here. Some of it also kind of depends on where's Hanniger. Is he almost going to be, is he going to be ready to be back from these rehab starts? Is Lewis getting close to being able to come back and be even just a full-time DH type guy? Um, some of that's going to also factor into this a little bit because if those guys are in your lineup, I think they're hitting consistently. I don't know if they're tearing the cover off the ball, but they're giving you more than what you're getting in the, out of the lineup without those guys in it. I think Hanniger's having a better year than what you've got out of um, Winker and uh, same thing true on the other side of that with uh, Lewis and what you've gotten out of the DH position so far this year, including even today where your Santana's 0 for 2, um, left guy on base. Yeah, you can get better there. But I agree with you, Stephen. Uh, watch VizQuest, I said, uh, I know you said it today, but good job by Logan. Astros lineup is very solid, and he was going up against Verlander. Most days, we'd at least be tied. Yeah, I, I think he did a fantastic job, just as good as you could ask. You keep this lineup through six innings to two runs. Um, I thought he did a, a relatively good job, except for those two innings where he kind of struggled a little bit. I give him some room on that. You're going to have a couple innings of struggling against this Astros lineup. So, uh, yeah, we've got to we've got to do more than than zero runs and a two base hits to help him out there. You know, but he did a great job, continues to show you why he's the ace of the staff this year and moving forward at the moment. A lot of people are a little bit higher on George Kirby. But to me, Logan's established. He's here. He's doing it right now. Kirby might get to eventually get there to doing it consistently, as as, as we're seeing from Gilbert. But we got it already right now in this guy. All right. Verlander's coming out now for the bottom of the seventh inning. Mariners are going to have. Middle of their lineup here, up to up to the plate. So, kind of a weak middle of your lineup today, though. I don't know. Winker, we got Wink, Winker, Santana, and Suarez. Not exactly a murderer's row. Steve Contreras says, "You think they still have some interest in Brian Reynolds? I know there was a lot of buzz about him last year. I haven't heard anything about him being a, of interest of them so far right now, Stephen. So they may, but there, there's been no reports of it that I've read." Um, but if you like a guy once, you can like a guy again. Again, just poor, poor, absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely just ridiculous approach by Winker here. You come out again. You need to get guys on base. You need to get this guy working a little bit. He comes out with a fastball. First thing you're swinging. If you're going to swing first pitch, if you're swinging first pitch, look at it in a, in a specific pot and, and stop. They're just popping everything up. It's tough to watch right now with our hitters today. Like they're just, again, the approach is real, real wonky. They're making this very easy on Verlander. He's pitching well, but he gives you a fastball in the middle of the plate and you put a you pop a weak ball up in the middle of the field. One reason why when Anniger comes back, I'm not married to needing Winker to be starting out there in left field. I'm perfectly okay at that point in a bad call by the umpire on first pitch. It's not helping us when the umpire is calling pitches out of the zone when our guys are showing good eye discipline. That was a slider off the plate by a, by a wide margin. Robo-umps. Robo-umps. Steven says uh, Verlander is going to have a complete game. He's looking like it. This is what a complete game usually looks like as you're going through it. And this has got all the hallmarks of it. Guy working fast, guy staying ahead of the counts. Hitters swinging at bad pitches. You know, it's, uh, that will get you there. All right, Santana's got it one and one now. Line of the delivery. Hard hit on a line, but drawn foul. This question is, I feel like 2023 is the goal. We'll regress a bit from this streak. I like preserving the farm. Wouldn't want to give up too much, only to get blasted from the third wild card. It's a solid point. I mean, it's a solid point. I think it depends, again, a little bit on the bats to me, fish quests that are coming back to the lineup. And if they now take this lineup from being a below middle of the road kind of lineup to now being a little bit of the upper level lineup, which I could see when you've got an addition of, and that ball's hit hard and deep, deep. Back of the track, that ball is gone! Zantana with a moonshot home run. 
Got a 2-1 count. What have I been talking about? Get yourself into some counts. Work it a little bit. Don't make this easy on Verlander. He gets a first pitch strike, which is a horrible call on Santana out the gate. Then he gets two balls around there. Verlander's got to come back into the zone. Santana's waiting on a pitch, probably waiting on the fastball there. No, it was a, it was a, a hanging curve, it looked like. Looks like a hanging curve. Hanging curve or a hanging slider. One of the two. It was more curved, though, because it was, it was kind of up and down. And he sat back on it and drove it. Great, great job. Great job by Santana. And we're in this. Let's have him go, Tony. Let's go. Boy, that was one of the, it, it just kept carrying and carrying. Usually in this stadium, things are hit and you're like, oh, that thing's out. And then the ball dies on the warning track like we saw happen with Dylan Moore in this game. That ball just kept going and going and going. 0-1 now here to Eugenio. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Eugenio has just not been able to hold back from swinging at those high fastballs from Verlander today. He's got two strikeouts in the game, and he has just not been able to hold back. He just The, the, the cheese is up there, and he's got to bite it. He's just too tasty for him for this power hitter. 0-2 now. Come on, Eugenio. Don't make this easy on him. There we go. Good eye. 99 miles an hour. Verlander just hit 99 on the gun in the seventh inning. 39-year-old Verlander, cooking. All right, one-two pitch now. There's the wind of the delivery. Nasty slider. Just a nasty drop it through the bucket slider. And Eugenio somehow, some way, keeps the bat up on his shoulder. Oh, that thing was 95% of that pitch was in the strike zone on its way to the plate. And at the last 5% of the pitch, it dropped out of the zone. Fantastic pitch by Verlander and great job by Eugenio. 2-2 Two -two delivery. Hit hard right in the middle. Oh, boy, Eugenio got a good swing. Best swing all day he's had. Best pitch he's had all day right in the middle of the plate. And he's just able to foul it back. He just missed that one. Oh, God, he just missed that one. He was all over it. Swung out of his shoes on that. Yep. You see his mouth open where he goes, oh, he knows he just missed it. All right, 2-2 two, two pitch, one out, 2-1. Two, 98-mile-an-hour fastball at the top of the zone. Yoenio holds off. Good job, 3-2. 80 pitches now for Verlander. Mark says, okay, finally a chink in the armor. Yep, a little, little chink, a little chink. Inside, he draws a walk. Okay, I thought for a second there the ump was going to give him the call. <laughs> like, don't you do that. Nice walk by Eugenio. You start out 0-2 and, and then just grind your way back in that at-bat. Great job. He's had two strikeouts today, kind of struggled. Really has looked a little bit overmatched at moments. That's a professional at-bat there. Well done. Dragon Dude says, I need Frazier to do good. This team needs Frazier to do good. I mean, nothing would help this team out better than if Frazier can get himself up into a, a place where he'd just be hitting 260, hit 270 for this team off of where you're at right now, and it would be a, a big boon to him. Curveball, strike one. Beautiful pitch by Verlander. Come back with a curveball on no one. You've been, you've been barely throwing it. Ballsy pitch, great pitch. Nothing Frazier's going to try to do with that. One out now, 0-1 oh here. Battered up the middle. It's a base hit. Eugenio's going to try to, is he going to try to go to third? He does. He gets to third. Boy, he was, he was tentative about it. He crosses. So it's a base hit up the middle by Dylan Moore. Great job by Dylan Moore. And Eugenio's crossing second. And he sort of is looking back. And he starts to run. Then he looks back. And he starts to run. Then he looks back. He starts to run. You're like, okay, are you going or not? And the camera's not showing us on the film, on the footage. But uh, Eugenio got enough with that to get through. And boy, just Verlander just missed catching that ball. It's actually a ball that he swung at, just able to get enough of the barrel on it to push it through the infield. And it's up the middle where the, the, the Altuve on that play is more stretched over towards the first base side, which kind of opens that up a bit for him. Good, I mean, I'd say it's a good piece of hitting, but you're sort of swinging out of the zone. So it's more of Dylan getting a little bit lucky there. But sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, right? Sometimes it's a little bit better to be lucky than good. Mark says, let's go. My wife says, call Mr. Frazier. That's right, Mark. 
That's Mr. Frazier to you. Mr. Frazier. 2A3 says Frazier was actually playing pretty good before the All-Star break. He was starting to come on. I was more referencing 2A3 what he's, where he's been kind of for the majority of the year. But yeah, if he can continue to come on, that'd be good for us. This is a guy that I like having coming in this spot here. Cal Raleigh up to the plate, left-handed hitter, lefty versus righty. Cal's got a natural kind of uppercut swing to him. So him getting the ball out there for a sack fly here, which is be a professional hitter here. As they like to say, when you're trying to draw a sack fly like this, rather than trying to yank it, think about just hitting this the other way. Sometimes the best approach to go at. First pitch swinging, high, out of the zone, 97 mile an hour, an hour foul, foul back by Raleigh. And he's kind of shakes his head. And, yeah, I shouldn't have. Shouldn't have swung at that. Shouldn't have swung at that. That was out of the zone. It's bomb time for Cal, says Steven. That's right. We need a Cal bomb. If they can have a breaky bomb, then we get a Cal bomb. All right. Houston's up 2-1. One out. 0-1. Oh, Here's the livery. Inside. And it looks like Frazier stole, for, for, Frazier stole second. Catcher indifference. He does not even throw out there. You, of course, don't want a bad throwing ball out to second at that play. Throw it in the outfield, and then the Mariners score a run easily without ever having to put a bat on the baseball. But this does now remove the threat of the double, the double play here with Cal. Very, very love the aggression there by Frazier. And Verlander wasn't paying much attention to him over on that side. All right, 1-1 one, one pitch. Far outside. Verlander throws a 98-mile-an-hour fastball just nowhere near. Nowhere near. Okay, you got a hitter's count here, Kyle. Look for it in your zone, man. Look for it in a very specific zone. Sit on, sit on a pitch even if, if at this point. You've got a bit of an advantage here. He's going to give you something to hit. Ooh, 98 mile an hour fastball just off the plate, swing and a miss. Very good pitch. That thing was just running right off the plate. A little two seamer. Is that, no, that's a four seamer. All right, two two. Come on, Cal. Come on, man. You just got to batter this thing out in the outfield. Just get a nice, nice little pop up. 99 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone, and he fights it off. Fouled. Great job, Cal. That thing had literal fireballs coming off of it as he threw that. Steve says a wild pitch would be nice as well. It would, Steve. That would work out. That would be very welcome here. God, then you get a guy in third with, no, with one out too. Justin's not been overthrown like that much this game. When he's missed, he's, he's missed pretty close to the zone. And really on those curves and sliders, which are usually the ones you put in the ground. 2-2 two, two pitch. Cal again fights off a 99 mile an hour fastball just a couple inches at the top of the zone. A little out of the zone at the top of it. But he manages to get his hands around. Great job, man. That is a tough pitch to hit for lefties. Just an awesome 99 by Verlander on just right near the black. Cal's probably got to swing at that ball. It's close enough. 2-2 two, two pitch. Ooh, gave him a slider. Cal was all over it and ripped it into the stands foul. Come on, Cal. Got to get contact here. That's the important part of this process. You got to get contact. It's easier said than done on a guy like Verlander, the way he's throwing right now. I mean, he's actually amped it up a couple of miles per hour this inning than what he's been throwing this game. And he swings out of the zone, strike three, 99 miles an hour, easily six inches high out of the zone. And boy, Verlander coming in with a couple of RPMs extra this inning. He's not been hitting 98, 99 throughout this game. Comes in then adds it up, adds a little bit extra right now. Mark says he'll lay off that next year. Yeah, Cal's developing, you know. He's a developing guy in that respect. And Seattle's bringing out. Lewis is coming out. All right, Lewis. Here we go. Two outs, 2-1, two Houston. Bottom of the seventh. Kyle Lewis has come out. Mariner fans should be on their freaking feet in that stadium right now. 
Steve, is this Cal just swinging everything? Yeah, he was just like, he decided he was going to swing kind of no matter what there, didn't he? Seems like about three, four pitches into that at bat, he was like, I'm just swinging. I don't care. All right, Mr. Lewis, what you got? What you got? Runners on second and third, two outs. Verlander's been money all day. First pitch down in the dirt. 1-0. Good eye by Kyle. Wonder if uh, Verlander here might, might be a little bit careful with Lewis here. Might pitch around him just a little bit with Haggerty on deck. Veteran pitcher like this might be thinking about this just a little bit. See if he can get Lewis to swing out of the zone. Does on that pitch. 99 miles an hour, just top of the zone. And Justin coming in with those extra RPMs, man. God, he is such a good pitcher. All game long, he's been sitting at about 96, 97 on the high side. Rarely even. And then now he's just every fastball coming in is at 99 miles an hour. One, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Ah, oh, seemed like he was kind of on it. Yeah, just a weird looking pitch. All right, one and two. Holds up. Boy, he almost went. Two and two. That was close. Lewis is not looking real comfortable right now in here on Verlander on some of these swings and just this about so far out the gate. Yeah, that was close. Yahtzee. No, it was good. He held up. The wrist didn't break. I'll give him that. Good job. 2-2 two -two pitch. Here we go. High. Three and two. Another 99 mile an hour fastball by Verlander. All right, so now the catcher's coming out to talk to Verlander. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised at this point if he says, just give him, give him a nasty pitch outside the zone. Let's see if we can get him to swing at it. If not, we put him on base, and then we've got Haggerty up. So, Lewis has got to be disciplined here. Play discipline is, is so important here because you're, you want, you're coming in a pinch hit. You want to get a hit. But if it, the pitcher's not going to give you something, you've got to – you got to just take the base if that's it. Here's the wind, 3-2. Out of the zone, like I thought, you're just hoping he gets into swing. I mean, that thing was not even nowhere near. I don't think Verlander, had, uh, and much of that bad, I don't think, I think he had kind of decided I'm not giving Lewis anything to hit. I mess up to this guy, and he puts it up in the deck, and I'm now losing this game as opposed to being in a position to win it. I'm going to make Sam Haggerty beat me. So Lewis draws a walk. Luis, uh, Abraham Toro will come out and pitch hit for him on first base. This is going to leave the bases loaded. Two outs, 2-1 two, Houston. Sam Haggerty up at the plate. Sam has had a very, very tough day here against Verlander. He's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. He has struggled a little bit. Make him put it in the zone here, kid. Swing and a miss. Uh, Fastball right on the black, 97 miles an hour. Again, ah, it's probably a ball he just swung at. Again, you're not that that and you look at that a little closer on the thing, ah, that's a ball. It's a hard not to swing at it. It's a ball that's trailing away late. But be patient here, man. Strike two, fastball, top of the zone. Whew. Not a great at bat here by Mr. Haggerty. It's a tough, tough two pitches, but this is where you can't swing that first pitch. Now you're 0-2. It's a tough second pitch is bad, but it's the first pitch is the one that messed you up. All right, 0-2. Ball. 98 miles an hour, a little out of the zone. Trying to get him to swing. That's 100 pitches for Verlander. So as, uh, as 283 was mentioned there in the chat, that's you have at least gotten him to work here through the eighth and ninth inning where you'll have an opportunity with the top of your lineup turning over to theoretically get into him then at that point. But you got the bases loaded right now. One, two. Swing. 
Swing and a miss. Strike three. Verlander's pumped. And who can blame him? He's pitched a whale of a ball game. Gets himself out of trouble there. Just a, a, a miserable bat by Sam Haggerty here. And uh, again, Haggerty's been hitting 300 this year. He's played some pretty good defense for you in right field. But you, you, you know, we talk about the Soto kid. Why are we talking about Soto? Well, if you, what if you had Soto here instead of, you know, and that's where I think that's intriguing some of the people when they consider that. Though I don't think it's going to happen, and I'm not saying I'm advocating for it now at this moment, but that, he's got some miserable at-bats today. Haggerty has. I mean, three strikeouts for a guy that should be more of a guy about putting the ball in play, not, he, you know, he's a limited power guy. He's put it in the field, let me use my legs kind of guy. All right, well, we did get the one run. So you are in a one-run ball game here. And as I said, you do get the top of the lineup to turn over. Unfortunately, on the other side of that, the Houston Astros also are turning over their top of the lineup in this particular um, next inning. So you've got to now keep that through with your bullpen. We'll see if they bring Brash back out for a second. Did fairly well in his first, first point there. But, boy, that's just some tough at-bats today. Verlander's been great. And, and, I mean, God, dude, him watching him ramp up those RPMs as he starts to get in a little bit of trouble and have that in his back pocket to utilize. You know, like he gets to, he gets to trot out at you at like 90% and dominate you through the whole part of the game. And then he starts to go, okay, now i got to dial it up to 96, 97. And uh, that's got to make it tough. And you're locking in on him at 95, 96. And, I mean, there's a difference. From 95, 96, you start getting to 99. That, that ball's coming in. See, it's, it's significantly higher speed. Mark says, laughing out loud, take it easy, buddy. We will see their bullpen. I don't know. I'm an emotional man. <laughs> oh, you're talking to Wash of his quest. <laughs> yeah, the Lewis at bat was great. He, he carved himself out a walk. It's a little bit like what I'd like to have seen some from our batters today a little bit more. You're going up against an ace. Make him work a little bit. You're going to have your share of strikeouts, but don't have the strikeouts come on 0-2 pitches, 1-2 and two pitches. You know, get him at least into 2-2 two and two counts. Find a way to start fouling some of these tough pitches off. And there's been a lot of these swings today that have been full. I'm going to, I'm going to swing from the back of my heels on 0-2 counts when it should be a little bit more about let's try to get the ball in play here. Let's try to get some base runners going. Um, and again, I don't want to take anything away from it. Verlander has been awesome today. Nine Ks, only two walks, one earned run. But again, you have made the job a little bit easier on him throughout this process. Just a bit. Steven says, can the Mariners just call Seager and see if he wants to just DH for us? I'm tired of watching this team not be able to hit in clutch situations. Uh, you, you'd love to see that door be potentially opened up for them, but of course uh, there, there was quite some animosity between the ball club and Seager, uh, at least as far as the front office goes between him and as he, as he was leaving. So I, I think that that's probably not a possibility, but It's a little bit why I'm torn on do we need a is it we need a, a starting rotation pitcher here or do we need another bat in this lineup and I'm, I'm not really sure I'm as sure that it's just a pitcher we need but maybe both all right so we've got a one two here on Altuve interesting to see if Astros bring Verlander back out for the eighth Swing and hit high, and that ball will fall in for a base hit. Nice piece of hitting by Altuve. There's, there's him doing exactly what I'm talking about our Mariners do. You know, you're not always going to get a great – good things happen when you put the ball in play. That's the thing about it. And if, and if you choke on the bat, adjust your swing, you know, fight things off. Like, you, it's a mentality and approach that you got to employ when you're, when you're in these kind of situations. Altuve just did it right there. You know, just get the bat on the ball. If I get the barrel of the bat on the ball, good things will happen. It's not a hard hit, but it gets in there. All right, Astros get their opening runner on here in the eighth. Didn't like seeing that. Pena's up at the plate. Slider outside misses, 1-0. 2A3 says, why is Brash back out there? Surprised they didn't go to Munoz. I'm a little bit surprised by that, too. Boy, there's 
issues getting the signs in here between Brash and the catcher. Will Jordan hit a bomb? I don't know. It depends on if they bring in a lefty here. We're not a lefty, but if they're going to stick with Brash. Brash has been a little uneasy here. He's had to he's had to work hard here through the first inning and in a third. Altuve gets a short little lead, and that ball's outside. Another slider wide outside. Boy, this is a scary moment here. You've got a good hitter up there with a 2-0 count. Runner on first. Scary, scary position. High, 96-mile-an-hour fastball is way too high. 3-0. and Come on, don't put the first two batters on, Brash. Your lineup finally gets you a run. Don't, again, make it hard on them. Make them at least earn it. Three zero pitch now, the delivery strike ninety six mile an hour at the knees. Nice job, three and one. There you go, Matt. Give him another one now. If he hits it, he hits it. You put yourself in the position. Three one. Brash is set. A short lead by Altuve. Ball is hit hard to the opposite way. This is going to push Altuve over to third. That's a base hit. job by Crawford backing up the throw there and Brash is just it's a good pitch there 97 on the edge good piece of hitting there by Pena he's looking fastball probably and just puts a good hard swing on it some of that too is that you've got Altovia on first base so France has got to stay there covering first base if you need to pick him off so he's going to be a step or two behind at that point and the Mariners are going to make a pitching change, and this is a pitching change, in my opinion, probably a little bit overdue. You should have done this at probably the start of the inning. I understand running Brash back out there if you don't score any runs in the previous inning, but the second you bring this to a one-run game, now you've got to bring out your, your big dogs out of the bullpen a little bit more and, and move them through. I don't think your, your – will Jordan hit a bomb? I hope he doesn't. Soto Mojo says uh, – Fish Quest, hell yeah. Kingfisher says thoughts on Kelnick. Well, I, I can't help but feel like Kingfisher at this point. You, you know, you're, you, Haggerty has been hitting around 300. He's been giving you good defense in the outfield. So there's a, there are some things you are getting from him out of right field. This, this lineup feels like it needs a little bit more pop to it to me to, to a degree at times than what it's getting. Um, between, your Fra you know, between Frazier and, and Winker and Dylan Moore, I mean, you've got, and get Haggerty, it's like you got a lot of guys that are kind of similar in what they're bringing from a skill set standpoint. I do think that there's a big difference right now between AAA pitching and major league pitching, and that though Kelnick is slaying the pitching in AAA right now, it does not necessarily make it indicative of the fact of now you bring him back up to the, to the major league roster, and he's going to do that here also as well. No doubt, he's, he's finally clicked in. The talent is still there with the kid. And I'm willing to give him another try. I think what the Mariners are aware of is that if you bring up Kelnick right now, and you and he's had this run, you bring him back up, and he now he fails again. You basically he's Dunsky for the year. There is no chance of him him refinding himself and 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 rediscovering himself through August and ready for maybe that September call up where it's it there's less of that pressure there as there might be if you bring him now. With that said, they do probably need to figure out what they got in this kid come sooner or later, and whether or not he is an answer here long term. And he's done enough at AAA to probably earn a call up, especially because the guys filling in at your your other positions aren't necessarily killing it. And, and I think that that's got to drive a little bit of this decision-making as well. So I, I think it's probably just about the time to consider it. Now, with that said, if Mitch Hanniger is going to come back soon and, and then take over left field, you know, do I, and Lewis, they say Lewis will play some right field as it is. You know, is there a, is there a process here over the next couple of weeks where there's a certain basis that he'll be playing on a nightly basis at that point? Or are you just going to try to work him in lefty-righty with Lewis? where, you know, Lewis starts against the lefties and Kellnick righties, and then Lewis is DHing um, if he's not playing on the field maybe or something like that. I don't know. Um, maybe along that. But I do think that Kingfisher at this point, it makes sense to, to bring him up with where he's been because, again, this lineup needs help. It just needs help. There's too many games here where we're just – we're really struggling to put up runs. And with the, with the starting staff doing as well as they are, it's um, 
So I say, you, you should go get another starting pitcher. It doesn't have to be top of the line. Just get another proficient starting pitcher out there and then go get another, get a bat somewhere. Get another added bat. Mariners do bring out the lefty, as I thought that I was hoping that they would do here in this kind of situation. Although it's, this is a tough one. Nobody out. Runners on first and third. 95 mile an hour fastball for a strike from Baruki. Baruki. Bruecki. Pronounce his name right. Steve Cottrell says killing uh, 96 mile an hour fastball inside corner by Baruki. Uh, 02 now on Alvarez. Uh, Steve says Kelnick's just a boss AAA player. He's not majors ready. He might not be. I mean, but uh, again, if I had the guys that were raking out there, I'd be more on that take a just slow, patient approach with him and let him just find his way. Maybe just give him another year in, in the minors. But uh, I do think sooner or later we've got to find out if this kid's an asset and a part of our future, or if he's something that we've got to you know put in a place somewhere else. All right, 0-2 count now. Baruki gets set. The line, the delivery, swing and a miss. 97 mile an hour fastball inside part of the plate gets a weak swing by Alvarez. Let's go. Nice job, Baruki. Just what you needed there. Just what you needed. Now the double plays back in play. Nice pitch there. It's tough on those lefty, lefty, lefty handed hitters. You don't see many lefties, man, and it feels awkward when you face them. But you got like a uh, rookie here who's got a little bit of a, it's not necessarily fully over the top. So some of that feels a little bit when it's coming out of his hands as a lefty, like it's coming from, from your ear in. All right, Bergman up now, one out, first and third. Pass ball, that's going to score. Pass ball. It's not a pass ball, and that that's a bad pitch, wild pitch. Baruki threw that wildly out of out of whack. Oh my gosh, three one Houston. Well, it might be a pass ball there. I think it's just the ball was. It was a place a catcher might be able to normally get it, but. And boy, if he's able to, Cal Raleigh could throw that ball after it's passed. There, he's got to play on that. He just can't get a good throw on it. All right, 1 0, 3, three 1 now. Jish. A little rough for the Mariners' bullpen today. Oh, I have to get that strikeout, man, the next pitch. It was supposed to be on the outside corner, and it just came back to the inside and low, and too far for Raleigh to have to go to get to that ball. Tough. One zero. -oh. Popped up in the air. Should be a can of corn. Crawford's under it. He's got it. Two outs. Boruki. Boruki. Steve Cottrell says Mariners really throwing this game, throwing out Brash and Brookie. Uh, yeah, I mean, why not after you got Baruki up with the lefty-lefty, go back to the right-hander after that? You get the strikeout, then go back to the righty and try to get the induced double playoff righty on righty. Kind of odd bullpen usage. Steve says Baruki is the yam Yamcha of this team. <laughs> uh, maybe he was one of those other lefty match if he was going to get after. I, I guess I could see why you keep him in at that point. Swing and a miss there. Because you got Tucker as the lefty. So I get what they did. I get. I see what Service did there. Lefty, righty, lefty. Just keep him in. Boruki. Hit high, middle of the field, center field. Caught, and that will retire the side. All right, well, run given up by your Mariners here. It's back to a two-run game. Top of your lineup is on deck. Let's see if we can make some make some hay with our guys like they have. Mm. 
Mm. We'll be right back, folks. One sec. Goodness, goodness, goodness. It was a good game today. No matter what, it's been a good game. It's been entertaining. Fun hanging out with you guys, I'll tell you that. Sorry, I got to get a little bit over here because I'm getting hungry. The afternoon hunger has kicked in. Won't make you guys watch here. So Crawford's on deck with France and Winker. Crawford's one for three. France is 0 for three, and Winker's 0 for three. So they're all due, right? So they're all due. That's what that means. Uh, Gabriel says, if Verlander throws it to Raleigh head, then that moron will swing at it. Oh, he's a young player. I don't think he's a moron, Gabriel. I think he's a young player still learning how to control the zone. And young hitters have the hardest time with probably controlling a zone. And look, you know, Verlander right now is the best uh, best starting pitcher in baseball by far at this moment. You know, I mean, he just is. So to, to swing miserably at that kind of guy, there's a lot of hitters that are going to swing miserably at Verlander. It's I don't think it's an, an indictment on the player himself. But again, you're looking at a young player here, Gabriel. I mean, you know, you don't expect a guy that's young, just coming into his first year, really playing full time, to to be like he's going to be when he's 26, 27, and he's got a thousand, fifteen hundred bats under his under his belt in this in his sport. Um, part of that is just the maturation process. It's part of why I've cautioned Mariner fans to show patience with this team because you have a young, developing team. You're doing it right. You're doing it appropriately. But within that as well is that you've got to have patience there with that because those kind of young teams are going to be inconsistent. Sometimes they get hot. Sometimes they'll go really cold. But you're building towards something. And I think Cal Raleigh is going to be a great part of this future as we go forward. Strikeouts are always, always going to probably be a part of his game. But if he gives you the kind of power numbers he can give you and if he can get that line, get that average up around more into that like 260 area, then you're perfectly happy with that kind of production from the catcher position, especially with what he gives you behind the plate. All right. So the Astros bring out their lefty, take on Ty. First pitch swing in Crawford pops it up. Again, you're I, I, I don't I don't <laughs> I don't understand this process. You're a top of the lineup hitter. Isn't your isn't your job to kind of take pitches and try to get on base? Why is he twice this game swung at first pitches? Kind of a maddening thing with that. This is one reason why I think they've taken Julio and put him at the top of the lineup. Is Crawford does the the like? Come on, take a strike or two, even you know, make the guy work a little bit. These first pitch, like I'm looking to. I mean, and if you are looking first pitch fastball, then you better put it on a line somewhere. You better have a plan of what you're looking to do with it. All right, Ty France up now, one out, bottom of the eighth. Astros up three one. Swing and a miss. Nice curve ball, bent down in on the feet of Ty France. Their hitters have just been pitching the same. Did he get hit? I didn't even see him get hit. Ty France got hit again. Ty, Ty gets hit so often that when he gets hit, I didn't even see him get hit. How did he get hit? They're not going to show it. That wasn't ball four. That was weird. That must have just like just barely dinged him. I didn't see that. Mark says over, over, over under 35 hit by pitcher uh, for Ty France. And <laughs> I, I would say over on that one in 2022. I go over. That was insane, though. I, I did not literally see how it hit him. 
It just looked like it was down in the dirt, but it must have caught his feet. Ty, first pitch swinging, hits right into a ground, double play. <laughs> Emeritor batters right now in this game are pissing me off a little bit, low-key. Like, you're going to first pitch swing? Okay. And then it's going to be weak sauce, just like Crawford did? Well, they made that inning easy. That's it. Three outs, one more, uh, one more inning. Tough game by the batters today by the Mariners. Um, I'm not going to fault them for not being able to get some hits on Verlander and a tough lefty of a lefty and to your matchups here in this inning. But again, you're not doing much for me if you're going to first pitch swing at stuff all the time. If you're going to decide you're going to first pitch swing, then you better be proficient in doing so. And if you're not proficient in doing so, then take some pitches, man. Mm -hmm. Gabriel says, how many pitches did Winker see in this game? This team is bad. Just admit it, dude. What? So, Gabriel, I always love getting in these kind of debates with people who come in. They just want to speak in magnanimous terms. I, I have this on my football channel happen all the time where people want to paint everything and got to be a black or white fashion. I notice there's people that have a hard time operating within the gray realm of things. This team just got done winning 14 games in a row, Gabriel. Okay? Teams don't win 14 games in a row in baseball if they're just bad and admit it. They don't do that. That's not how baseball works. You're a bad team, you don't even get to 10 wins in a row, much less 14 wins. This team is a good team. It plays good defense. It's got great pitching throughout. It's got a good bullpen. And its hitting has been a bit inconsistent. I'll definitely give you that. Does that equate out to me that this is a bad team? No, it doesn't. And again, the record doesn't speak to this. Your record is what it is, Gabriel. Record is what it is. And we're well above 500 right now at this portion of the season couple months into the season. So are you an elite team right now? Are you at the level right now, maybe where the Astros and the Yankees are in the, major, in the American League, that you should be considered up into their realm of things? No. But are you a playoff team right now and how you're playing? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know how you – I would love to understand how you come to that conclusion. seems that you're coming to that conclusion because Cal Raleigh swings at a pitch out of the zone against Furlander and Winker on a lefty-lefty matchup against the Astros' best left-handed pitching player out of their bullpen – Hits it weekly. I don't like his approach. I don't like him not taking a pitch there, just like I don't like Crawford not taking a pitch there. But that doesn't mean they're bad then. It just means I don't like their approach in that given moment. Steven says the Mariner batters have been pissing you off lately. They've been pissing me off for years. I know. Yeah, it has been annoying for years on this type of stuff. This, uh, you know, I come from an era when I'm just going running back 10, 15, 20 years ago. Pitch, hitters came up with a plan. It wasn't just to swing from the back of their back of their feet at every every pitch. They were trying to find a location and lock in on it. And I, I don't see any control by the hitters today in the zone. A, a lot of swings out of zone, a lot of not willing to take pitches, a lot of over-aggressiveness. One thing the team's done a good job of this year is while the strikeouts have been there like they've been in recent seasons, they have done a very good job of still drawing walks in between that. And we're, we just haven't seen you know, a lot of that today. Seahawks 12th man says, do you think Julio's what's affecting our lineup? I don't know if it's hurting us. It's definitely, he's, we're better when he's in it, and we're going to put more runs up when he's in the lineup. But I think today is beyond just Julio. I can't speak to yesterday necessarily. I didn't get a chance to see the whole game. But um, certainly today there's been a couple of moments where you're missing Julio's presence. Not just his bat. There was a, a hit out in the field that was in the gap that I think you know he's able to run down and cut off and maybe hold back a run on that given play versus having you know who you do have out there in center field right now but it's hurting it's not everything the, the, i would put more today a little bit on look verlander being nails and if i'm going to a second thing i'm saying you know the approach of your hitters in your lineup today left a lot wanting there there's a lot you left on the a lot of meat you left on the bone you weren't going to put up five six runs in this game don't get me wrong but you could be a lot further along than just one run right now with a little bit better approach at times Gabriel, so you're you're saying you're saying I guess two different things in your comments. So you say Gabriel says the Yankees won 13 in a row last year and they were awful. Luck happens. This is a 500 team. Nothing more. They will drop. So I guess Gabriel, you know, you want to work off of not sample sizes, but what you see in general, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna lean into what's a general rule of thumb rather than an outlier or an oddity, let me just ask you this: If we look over historically the last 20 years of baseball, 
bouncing ball there, and it's going to be a tough play. Nice job by Crawford. Gabriel, if you look over the last 20 years of baseball, and there are teams in a given season that win 10 or more games, do you think that of those teams that won those games over 20 years of baseball, do you think a high majority of them were well over 500 by the end of the year? Or do you think that there was a far minority of them that were, above, that were below 500 by the end of the year? Right? So just because you pick up a Yankees team that won 13 in a given moment, what's the rule of thumb over a general period here? General rule of thumb here is if I have a team winning over 10 games in a given season, that's a pretty good team. That's a team winning more games than they're losing, and that's a good team. Second part I'd like to address on your thing is you're saying this team's just bad. You say this team's bad. You say it over and over again in the chat. And then you also say, then you just say now in your recent chat, this is a 500 team, nothing more they will drop. So are they a bad team or are they a 500 team? Because a 500 team is not a bad team. Those are two different things now you're saying there. They're either 500 or they're bad. That's what I'm saying. It's like, let's not overstate our, our, our argument or our case just to try to land it. Stay what it is. And it's a team that's right now a little bit better than 500. That's a hard hit ball deep, but that will die on the warning track for a catch. It's a team that's young and coming along, and what they are right now, Gabriel, is inconsistent. That's As I've been talking about, that's what you get from young teams. They are building up, right? I'd like to see them add more, and they do need more. But again, it doesn't mean that they're trash or garbage because I think they need more. I, I just don't speak in those ultimatum ways. It's got to all be this one way or all oh, be that way or they're all, these are awesome. Oh, they're shit. Oh, they're awesome. Oh, they're crap. There's, let's, let's find the little middle ground here. Let's speak with, as I like to say, a little more nuance as we look at this team. Uh, Gabriel says Verlander didn't pitch great. The idiots were swinging at a ton of bad pitches. Well, they were swinging at a lot of bad pitches. But again, this is where I go to Gabriel. I notice in our discussions here, you seem to be an all this way or an all nothing way. Like it's got to be all this or it's all that. And I think that speaking rather than the ultimates or absolutes that we're speaking in, let's speak it in again with a little bit more of the range of nuance, right? Not all of the world is black and white in everything you're viewing. Sometimes there's big date, there's shades of gray that can be both dark and very light. I would say if you're putting the shades of gray to get together today as it opposed, as it uh, pertains to Verlander, as he pitched a very good game, and then the Seahawks batter has also swung at a lot of bad pitches around that. I think it's a bit of a combination of the two myself, but that's just my particular perspective on it. Steve says, I'm just tired of this Mariners philosophy, good pitching, good defense, and mediocre hitting, mediocre batting. I feel you on that. I think hitting is a, is a trouble spot throughout the league. You know, if you look at hitting right now, as we've talked about in this post-steroid era, it's continued to be a problem. You know, what's, what's the leading, you know, hitter right now in the major leagues? They're just hitting a little bit above 300. Go back 20 years ago, around the steroid era, you had guys hitting 340, 350, 335. Guys hitting 335 with power. You know, and I think it's been a problem league-wide in finding guys that can hit. And when it becomes a, a, a position of scarcity throughout the league, and not, not position, but a, a problem of scarcity throughout the league, finding quality hitters in a lineup, you know, that's, that's an issue. I mean, look at this Astros lineup, which is considered a great lineup, a strong lineup. Altuve's hitting 276, Pena's 263, Alvarez is 307, 242 for Bregman, 250 for Tucker, 236 for Gary L. McCormick's hitting 230, Myers is hitting 250, and Maldonado's hitting 164. You know, so, you know, everybody's having a little bit of this problem right now with putting together a really good quality lineup. Everybody is. It's not just a, an issue that's only struggling with the Mariners themselves. It is a struggle, and it's an issue we need to get around and work on, but I think it's indicative of what's kind of going on throughout the sport a little bit as well. Myers just got just hit by a pitch right on the elbow. That's like the opposite of the try Ty France hit by a pitch where France got it on probably the gentlest of spots. Like he was hit as easy as he could. He just got it right on that elbow. Oh, that's got to hurt. That's got to sting. Uh, Gabriel says the 500 team is not a playoff team. They are better than Oakland, but Oakland are trash. But again, your initial, your initial point, Gabriel, was bad. You said they're bad. A 500 team's not bad. And, and the reason why I'm kind of holding your feet to the fire on this one a little bit is that this is an exciting team. This is a team on the rise. This is a team that's coming together. We may not see the fruits of that fully this season, but the fruits of that are coming because the process has been done correctly by this Mariner organization for the first time in 20 years. And rather than moan about that and rather than complain about that, when my organization starts to do things that are smart and intelligent, I'm going to laud them for that. I'm going to praise them for that rather than tear them down for that. 
And that's why I'm pushing back on you on this is it's, this is not a, a typical Mariners team of what we've seen over the last 20 years. This is a team with some hope, with some rays of light. So let's more concentrate on the rays of light than get stuck on the fact that they're not moving along fast as we would like them to move along. Well, we'll see, Gabriel. We'll see. And that will find. So uh, we got our, our reliever comes in, does the job here. Castillo does a great job. Handles that inning, gets him out. We got a two run game here. Ninth inning, Seattle's last chance up here. Do on deck, you got Santana, Suarez, and Frazier. Let's see if they can maybe get a little bit of that Mariner magic, a little bit of Soto magic. Rally hats. Rally hats. Dragon Dude says it's close, is it not? It is close. Yeah, it's not like they're bad, you know, blowing the doors off us here. We're down by two runs. Come on, Frazier. Let's get another Santana home run to start things off. And Suarez then go back to back. Frazier gets on on like a, a, a little dribbler. Astros throw it, overthrow it to first base. Gets around, gets around second, gets all the way to third. Base knock by, uh, base knock by rally to bring him in. Calling it. Calling it. Soto Mojo, baby James. Soto Mojo. Let's go. Come on, team. Let's go. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna get the Astros closer, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. Come on now, we'll marry your magic. This is how we do it. This is what we do. <laughs> oh goodness, we're gonna have to salvage this one tomorrow in this series. All right, Abreu's coming out. 28 games, 4-0 record, 3 ERA. 49 strikeouts, 16 walks in 33 innings. Tough to hit. Tough to hit the righty. All right, here we go. Come on, Soto Magic. By the way, the Astros aren't winning the World Series with Valdez, Equity, and the is guys, the NL team will crush them again. Could be. Could be on that, Gabriel, for sure. They definitely look like they could use a little bit more help. Well, the nice thing about this is it's a long, long baseball season, right? So you still have like a week left of July, and then you still got two months of the season left through August and September. So... A lot can happen in that time. All right, Santana, 1-0 now as he takes the ball inside, 96 miles an hour in. Santana providing the only run of the game for our Mariners today, a solo home run in the seventh. Abreu set. Here comes the 1-0. Ooh, he started his swing. They go to third base. They say he did not. 2-0. Nice side by Santana. Way to hold up. Mark says, never say die is the heart of this team. You know it. Space City, I'm sorry, man. This is where we got to come back now. Oh, swings on a 2-0 pitch. I guess service just lets these guys be aggressive whenever, huh? 
There's no sense of like, hey, if you're 2-0 and we're down by two runs and like you're not going to get this all done on your one swing and you can get on, like maybe get on base. <laughs> Try to. He swings on a 2-0 pitch. And, and again, when they're, I can, I'm okay if you swing on a, like a 2-0 pitch or you like Crawford did at the top of the lineup on his last at bat. I'm all right with it. But then at least put a good swing on it. At least give it a ride. You know, don't make it some meekly, you barely throw your hands out at the, at the ball. Suarez up now. It's first pitch swinging 97 miles an hour, and he fouls it back. All right, 0-1. Come on, Eugenio. Ball's up high. Nice job by framing in that pitch there by the catcher, Maldonado. He almost brought that thing right in where it looked strikeish. Good eye there, buddy. All right, you know you're getting a fastball here. Lock in on it. 1-1 one, one delivery. Oh, I threw a slider. Fooled me, too. I've been fooled all day. I, I wouldn't be hitting any better than these mirrors today, I'll tell you that, with the way I've been calling pitches. Astros have had me off guard all day with what they've been doing. One, two delivery outside, two and two. Yeah, I think the Astros Yankee series would be a good one. I think it would. And I, I kind of agree with Fish Quest that the modern game is kind of home run centric as it is. I don't like it either, Gabriel, and that that's the way the game plays these days, but it sort of plays that way everywhere. Yohani know, tries to fight off a tough slider on the outside corner and he just pops it up, first base. Two outs. Well, the Mariners have not, not making it tough on his Astro team today. They are not making him uncomfortable in the least. Mark says uh, Astro's much, bullpen much better than I thought. They're playing good. They're, 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 they're pitching well. Uh, I'm not surprised to see it out of their closer here. I think the previous couple innings, they made it a little easier on those relievers. But here comes Adam Frazier now. He's two for three with a stolen base. I think somebody said he had a, like 11 game hit streak or something. Good on Adam. Good on Adam. The wind, a little low. Ugh, that was low. The ump's given a couple calls today, I'll tell you that. He's not been bad, but there's been a couple calls that have been like, I don't know about that ump. I don't know about that one. That looked, that looked about three inches low. Oh boy, all right. Bows it off, one and two. Oh, we're at game time here. Boy, just not much of a fight day by our Mariners on the, with the bats. Last couple of days, these, this lineup has looked a little bit overwhelmed here. They're missing Julio and they certainly are still missing some parts and pieces that are due to return. Just a weak swing and a miss on a slider to finish it off. Strike three, game over. Brutal, brutal, tough, tough loss today. Um, certainly you're going against Verlander and that's an ace and you don't put, it's rare you put those kind of wins down and say, oh, that's a, that's absolutely going to be a victory for us that game. Let's put that down as a W. You're not going to do that. Let's face that. But again, as again, to find that place of nuance and to hopefully find that, you know, spot of, like I say, a little bit of the gray area here. This is a little bit of a, a some poor approach by your Mariner bats today and great pitching by this Houston staff. Um, you know, you'd hope to come into this series after the all-star break on that run and make a little bit more noise than you were able to make today. And that's uh, definitely discouraging because we thought this Mariner team was right about ready to really not just catch fire, but start to really take the bull by the horns to the second half of the schedule. There's a lot of games left to be played here, and this is a marathon season. It's a season that's going to go up and down and all over the place, and you, you, just, you do want to try to be hot at the end as if you can get in the playoffs. I do think this team is going to be still pushing for the playoffs, but this is also the question of now where Jerry DePoto stands on this is, 
what can I add and who can I add and how much do I want to give up for this particular year? Knowing that there is the long-term approach as you look at this team and saying that we want to look to the future and the team being this. And then that's when we start to add this and add that. And we don't want to sacrifice, sacrifice that future for the now. They haven't made any deal to do so with that, but you do know that they probably have some money in the coffers to spend here so they could take on some salary. I still would reckon that you could probably bring in another bat or another starter without having to give up the most prime of prime of assets in your farm system outside of essentially going after a unicorn like Soto is. But this team still got some chances to go here. Let's, let's salvage this game tomorrow. Let's see if we can pull that through. Um, there was some good parts to this game. I thought they played solidly defensively speaking. Um, you know, hell, uh, Logan Gilbert continues to show you that he's going to be an ace for this staff moving on to the future. And that's a great thing to have, whether he's got two pitches or not. Uh, Dragon Dude says the Hawks, nest, the Crow's Nest, a good stream, by the way. Well, thank you, Dragon Dude. I had a lot of fun doing this, folks. We're going to be doing a lot of these streams on Mariner Games throughout the course of the rest of this year. So if you uh, do have your notifications on, do get subscribed. Hit that like button if you could for me. We'll be going bigger and bigger on this channel as we move through this summer a little bit. Want to continue to do this. I had a lot of fun with you guys today. This was an awesome experience with you. Space City, thank you, man. Thanks for being respectful in here as an Astro fan. I do appreciate you. And like I said, I do wish you guys the best of luck. You do have a very good team. Hopefully, we can hold those brooms back tomorrow. Hopefully. Fish Quest, well, uh, was nice to see Lewis back. Good pitcher from Gilbert. Home run from Santana was awesome. Verlander was mortal after all, although we couldn't capitalize. Some silver linings, though, go ins. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at a Verlander's day, and he pitched really well, and he was dominant. You could have probably scratched out another run or two potentially on him if you made it a little bit tougher on him. I'm not saying you're ever going to put four or five runs up on the board with the way he was throwing today, but it does seem like you left a little bit of meat on the bone there potentially and making this game a little bit tighter. Service and his use of the bullpen there at the end and who he had on, on, on how he kind of played the matchups a little bit was, was a tiny bit odd. Again, these are just small little criticisms. I mean, it was a well-played game, so can't, can't knock it from that angle of it. A lot of words to hide the team is pathetic. I'm not hiding any of the words. I, I have tried to, Gabriel, to get you to speak more and nuanced on this, but I can see that it's it's sort of they're all with us or they're all against us is sort of the mentality that you're you're employing here as you view the team. They either all they either are completely awesome or they're just completely crap. Um, again, I've tried to find that nuance point with you to find maybe a middle ground, but I guess we're probably just not going to reach it, which does happen from time to time. Uh so you'll come here you'll come here to crow if we get beat by the Astros and we're swept by the Astros after we had 14 games in a row and we happen to get beat by the team that's winning the division and has the second best record in the major league and make American League. Okay. Do what you need to do, man. Steven says I'd love for this team to send out these sub th these sub 200 hitters. Stop stop sending out laughing out loud. Yeah, I would like to see it too, Steven. It's a little bit like how you got to figure out how this lineup's going to flow into this into into August, especially in September, when you're going to need to make this late game run, um, and that you're getting Lewis back, you're getting Hanniger back. The part that I noticed, Gabriel, you're not talking about is the guys you are due to get back in this lineup. Say nothing if you can get Kelnick back hitting consistently. Maybe he's not ready for it, but I can tell you if Hanniger and Lewis are out there consistently, I know those guys are going to hit in this lineup. So I have a lot more faith with where they stand on it. All that all that said. There is an opening to add a hitter to this lineup or a starting pitcher. I'm I'm definitely open to doing so, and I'd love to see it. Uh, Mark says, great content as usual from the Crow's Nest. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. We'll be back, Mark. We'll be back. Go Mariners, Fist Quest. And Gabriel, they might be exposed to the World Series. You never know on that. We'll, we'll see. Like I said, it's where they are right now and where these teams are right now is not where they're going to be at the end of September. And uh, teams are different at different hots and colds. And you, you never know who might be getting hot at that point in time and who's really hitting the ground. I certainly wouldn't put the Astros as a front-running team to win the World Series at this point uh, or to even reach the World Series. I know they do have the Yankees number to a degree, but uh, with where the Yankees are, and I'm, I'm also expecting the Yankees to make another move here before the deadline to add on to that team beyond what they are, um, I think they're pretty scary as well. I do. All right, well, we will wrap this up on that, folks. Thank you for everybody who watched it on the stream today. Thank you for all the new subscribers as well. We've had some great growth on this channel. I didn't think we were going to have just, just starting this up from scratch here over the last month or two. So uh, thank you to all the new subscribers and all the new folks hopping on in. Tough loss today, but we're going to get back at it tomorrow and see if this team can salvage this series, get themselves back to front. We'll see how long Julio is going to be out. That's going to be a big part of this process as well. But uh, hopefully, hopefully they can turn it around. Either way, I really do appreciate you guys watching. 
And let's uh, let's just enjoy this. Whether or not this year is the year that they tap into being that great team or it's going to take to maybe next year to kind of round this out, we'll see. I think that they have developed a little earlier than I thought this year. I, if you listen to my opening up of this channel and talking about this team in one of the first videos that I made, I said, look, let's, let's hold our expectations and temper them down just a little bit this year. I know coming off of last year and the magical run and all those one-run one, one games you had to win, it set people to a certain level of expectation. But you are doing this through the slow process. You're not trying to shortcut this. And what that means by the slow process is it is slow. It's going to take some time to get to its rise, but because you're doing it appropriate, you're baking the cake right rather than just turning the oven up to 550 degrees and like, I don't have 30 minutes. You're not doing that. And that's what you have done in the past here in Mariner history recently when you're making deals and signing guys like Adrian Belgray and Richie Sexton, Robinson Cano, you're trying to shortcut the path. And they're not shortcutting the path. They're taking the long way around, which just means we need to be a little bit more patient with them because they're doing it the right way, the intelligent way, the smart way, which will bring out the best results to us in the, in the future, whether that's short-term future or long-term future is the part that we need to figure out. Thank you guys for jumping on here. I appreciate you guys. And please don't you ever forget, even in losses like this, even when Justin Durant, Verlander's nails, don't you forget. Go M.